and you. Swag football is back, and it's more than just a game. It's the Labor Day Classic, Prairie View in Texas Southern, and it's coming up next on ESPNU. College football presented by City brings you to Reliance Stadium in Houston, Texas for the 23rd annual Labor Day Classic as Texas Southern takes on Prairie View. These two teams mirror each other in many ways. Both won just three games a year ago. Both are senior laden and both have head coaches who are entering their fourth year and need to win. Hello, everyone. Charlie Neal, along with Eddie Robinson, the former NFL linebacker. Welcome to Houston. And Eddie, even though Prairie View won only three games a year ago, they made a lot of noise as far as their defense is concerned. They were ranked eighth in the nation, and Zach East is back to anchor that defense again. Of course, Zach East is the guy that you have to talk about first. He's a total football player. This guy is very aggressive and also instinctive, and that aggressive attitude really transcends to the rest of this Prairie View defense. When you're number eighth in the country and number one in the SWAC conference in defense, you take the field a certain swagger and Zach East embodies that swagger that this Prairie View defense has. As far as Texas Southern is concerned they like to throw the ball but you know on offense you have to have balance and that balance comes in the form of the running game and they're looking at Brent Wilson to come back and lead that attack. Yeah of course in 2005 he had a thousand yards however last year he missed the last three games because of a, na a nagging ankle injury. All they need him to do is to have a good consistent game today and be productive and he can keep this attacking Prairie View defense off balance. As you look at Henry Frazier, the head coach of the Panthers of Prairie View, of course, some of the players have seen their parents and grandparents be a part of this. This is what the coaches have had to say because this is a rivalry. It's more than just a football game. It's a rivalry that goes back many, many years. And, of course, on the other side, there's Steve Wilson, also in his fourth year as the head man at Texas Southern. And uh, he said, we've each gone through the same things to put our programs in the position that they are now. In fact, both teams, as they like to say, are all grown up. Yeah, they both started off I mean, the last couple of years with a lot of true freshmen playing. And now those guys are juniors and seniors. So they're expecting these guys to compete, not only in this ball game, but also in this SWAC conference race in 2007. Prairie View won the toss, but deferred. And they will be kicking off a very dangerous return man. You see him there for Texas Southern and Dan Daniels. And they're trying to keep it away from him. And they do. They get it onto the left side. Or it is Daniels with the ball. And he's down the left side. And run out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. And it was Dan Daniels. And he was run out of bounds by Chris Ford for Prairie View. So Texas Southern gets the ball and very, very good field position to start this edition, the 23rd edition of the Labor Day Classic here in Houston, Texas. A 32-yard return for Mr. Daniels, or Mr. Davis rather, da Daniel Davis, who uh, averaged 18.4 yards per kickoff return a year ago. And there's Tino Edgecombe talking about tonight's game. He says the offense is ready to bust out. We've had to rely on the defense to keep us in games, but now it's time for the offense to step up. It is first and 10, and he's working from the shotgun with an empty backfield. Going to the air on first down. Has a complete on the far side of the field, and finally bumped out of bounds on the far side. And here's the starting lineups presented by Dick Sporting Goods. We'll start with the backs and receivers for Texas Southern in the backfield. Brent Wilson, the senior, along with Courtney Beckton. The tight end is Marcus Justice. The wide receivers, Dan Davis. And you see Michael Anderson and the offensive line. The receivers, they call themselves the Ochos Plus Two because all of the receivers have an eight in their number. And here's Davis with the reception for first down, finally brought down by Chris and Dingapu. On the stop on the defensive side for Prairie View. The down lineman of LeVan Williams Abdu Gosala, along with Collie and the linebackers Hicks, Logan, and Revolta. And you saw the secondary. It is first down and 10. Again, passing on every down. This time, Tino Edgecombe will not get away from the defense led by Zach East, the linebacker. 
And we talked about out of Yates High here in Houston. He started his college career at Hampton University and then transferred here to Texas uh, to Prairie View. Yeah, you talk about Jack Yates High School. I mean, that high school is literally right across the street from Texas Southern over in Third Ward. And they've had such guys as Santana Dotson, Dexter Manley, John Roper, just a lot of great defensive players who played in the NFL. So he has a big tradition to follow up coming out of that high school. No question about it. A loss of one. It'll be second down and 11. Quick pass to Davis on the near side. Davis making a move to the outside. Boy, some people left their shoes on the field on that move, didn't they? Yeah, I see why they call him the dangerous <laughs> Daniel Davis. And you can, in a tight spot, he can make people miss. And another first down. This is a great play. When you get the guy, the ball to a guy who's a punt returner, so you just get him out there with a one-on-one -on -one blocker, and you can see, I mean, he can make people miss in a very small space and get extra yards. Our quarterback, Tino Edgecombe, three for three in the game so far, 37 yards. Here we have the possible first run. Now it's a fake and a play out of the backfield, and it's complete down to the 15-yard line. Our quarterback, Edgecombe, is yet to have an incomplete pass, four for four on the day in the passing department. And he gets it to the big tight end, Marcus Justice, a senior out of Rialto, California. Now, Steve Wilson told us, he said, hey, this is a pass conference in the SWAC, so we have to improve our passing game. But he didn't tell us he was going to come out with five wide receivers and run a no hook. <laughs> Second down and 10. No gain on the last reception by Justice. And here's the handoff to Brent Wilson. Brent Wilson with the first carry of the day. Missed the last three games of last season with an ankle injury. Gained over 1,000 yards two years ago and held at just 400 a year ago. And he picks up yards down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line before he stopped by a dingapoo. Coming off that injury, I know that first running play has to feel good for Brent Wilson just to kind of get everything back. I mean, he has missed those last three games, but this guy is a stud. I mean, he had 1,000 yards in 2005 and was preseason out conference last year, and that injury just really slowed him down all year long. He is the son of the head coach, Steve Wilson. From the shotgun, Edge Cole, who's put on some weight in the offseason to try to help himself as far as stamina is concerned. This pass is caught by Anderson. But he's not going to get to the first down marker. That was a third down play. What was that second down? A lot of diversity. This is just, just a quick out route. You can see the aggressive of Fairview defense there. You have Zach East and Revolta. Those guys just really surrounding the ball carrier. Fairview is really off balance here. I mean, it's just a lot of different things that Texas Southern are throwing at him early in this game. That was a third down play. That'll bring on the field goal unit. Conway, who kicked the winning field goal a year ago against Prairie View, puts this one up, and it's no good off to the left, and it's why this was a 42-yard attempt. He had the distance, but it just did not go through the uprights. So Edgecombe, the first drive, 5 of 5, 37 yards, and Prairie View holds on defensively, and you see why they had such a good defense a year ago. Yeah, that's a good bend, but don't break. I mean, the team comes out with five wide receivers. You're just thrown off a little bit, so we'll see what Fairview can come back and answer with. I mean, they were a running team last year, but they've also improved their passing game in the offseason. So from their own 20, Prairie View goes to work first down and 10. And on their first play, they're going to go to the air, and it's caught, and they're going to call it an incompletion. It was in and out of the hands of the receiver, Mark Eisen. He was hit, let it go, and the reception is called incomplete. It was, Fulgham was there to make the hit on him. Here's your stats on Chris Gibson. He's out of Forestville, Maryland. Started his career over at Bowie State with Coach Frazier when Henry Frazier was the head coach of Bowie State and matriculated to Prairie View with him when he came four years ago. Gibson split time at quarterback last year. Here's a pass again incomplete out into the flat as we look at the Dicks sporting goods starting lineup starting with the backs and receivers for the Panthers of Prairie View with Babers Bray in the backfield Revolta Whedon and Eisen on the receivers the down lineman up front Deal Jones Maurice Robinson Steve Jackson and Cleveland Collie. 
Holly, three seasons, second team, all Southwestern Athletic Conference. Third down and ten now for Fairview. From the shotgun again. Still trying to complete the first pass, and there's a flag. And the handoff goes to Babers coming out of the backfield. And he gained maybe a yard on the play, but we'll see what the penalty flag is all about. Our referee today is Charles Lewis. So, new life given to Prairie View with the offsides penalty against Texas Southern. Defense on the 57, five yard penalty, replay, third down. So, Derek Gray, the defensive end, preseason first team all conference. Feels maybe an NFL prospect flagged for being offsides on the play. So it's third down and five now. And this one goes into the dirt and is incomplete. And let's look at the Texas Southern defense with Valmore, Malone, and Gray, the three down linemen. Five, four linebackers, a boy, Club Dovey. Beck and Dawkins and the secondary car Aaron Moore and Salyan. Fourth down, hunting situation for Prairie View. Pedro Ventura, a freshman. This will be his first kick as a collegian. Out of Houston, Texas, went to Westfield High. And he gets it off. But again, he keeps it away from Daniel Davis, and it rolls all the way down to the 30-yard line. So the first kick for him results in a 45-yard punt. Not a bad way to start your college career. No score in Houston. ESPNU College Football is presented by City. Let's get it done. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. After starting the game five of five in the passing department, Tino Edgecombe has his team set with their second possession of the day from their own 30-yard line. They drove all the way down to the Prairie View 20 on their first drive, but missed on a field goal. And let's see what happens on this second possession. 10.54 to go. First quarter, no score. Pass out in the flat goes incomplete. And they may have called it a lateral because I didn't hear the whistle blow, and I think that's what they're going to call it. And they're going to call it an in, uh, a loss on the play. Fortunately for Texas Southern, Daniel Davis was right there to pounce on it. Yeah, you have to be careful when you're running those type of plays. That ball is always live until you hear that whistle blow. And he was a little bit uh, easy about getting back on that football instead of uh, having some type of uh, sense of urgency. First incompletion for Edgecombe. Four of five, 44 yards in the game so far. They lost five on the last one. Anderson is the man in motion. Here's the handoff to Wilson off the left side. Brent Wilson gets the five back, plus maybe a half. So to bring up a third down, third and about nine. You like what Brent does right here. I mean, he just sees the cut and he puts that left foot down and just goes north and south. Gets vertical and gets the five yards. But a lot of young backs don't realize that every play isn't designed to score a touchdown. Just take the six yards and now you're in a third and nine situation where you can still try to have a chance to get the first down. Now Edgecombe goes with an empty backfield. Steve Wilson has taken over the job as the offensive coordinator and calling the plays for the second straight year after Jimmy Johnson, who was the offensive coordinator, left to become a coach with the Minnesota Vikings. Here's a pass out in the flat. It's complete. And still not going to be enough for a first down as the reception that time made by Brian Wilson. A lot of high percentage plays by Texas Southern. They're getting the completions. They're really relying on those receivers to make blocks on the edge and letting their big receivers just try to make people miss on a perimeter. Not a good way, not a bad way to get the game started. And it really relaxes your young quarterback just to get things going smooth so he can have some completions under his belt moving down later into this game. Solomon back to punt it away for Texas Southern. Babers, the deep man to return it for Prairie View. 
And this one will be fielded by Babers right at about the 29 yard line but he's dropped after a gain of about three up to the 32. So the second possession of the afternoon coming up for the Panthers of Prairie View. From their own 32 yard line here's Babers. Coach is real high on him. And of course. A year ago they had a young man named Arnell Fontenot who did a great job 424 yards. Here's the quote on Chris Gibson on tonight's game. The fans are going to see two very skilled and spirited teams that are coming out to win. This rivalry is alive and well. There's no question about that and Gibson working out of the shotgun on first down and 10 and here's the handoff to Babers and Babers gets up to about the 39 yard line but he's smacked down real quickly there by Texas Southern's Cornelius Armin I believe. This is a fair views coming with their spread offense. I mean last year they were more of a high formation team. Here you can see they're trying to pe move people out get guys out of the box and you get a little quick guy like Babers. I mean this is a guy that Coach Frazier talked about the excitement that he brings to this team. He's only 5'9", 170, but he gets up in there extremely well. And you can see on the punt returns how he can make people miss. This is a guy with one-on-one -on -one, uh, tackling ability. It'll be hard to take him down if he's in the open field. Babers in the backfield. And they got the big fullback back there, too. Play action to Babers. Gibson stands in there, throws. And it goes incomplete. Nobody home. The closest receiver to that ball for the Panthers of Prairie View was Ben Boyd. Gibson still has yet to complete a pass in the game. Yeah, and they were working a lot of double moves before the game and you can see when you're sitting there and guys are running post corners and deep routes you're going to get hit if you stand back there too long trying to bake a piece and look down the field to see who's open. But I mean it's a situation where Prairie is going to take some shot deep. I saw them in the precinct before the game and really taking a lot of shots going down the field. So they're going to try to get some big plays in the passing game. It was 121 teams in Division One AA last year. Prairie View came out 118th in the passing department, and they're struggling so far here today as the quarterback tried to get to the first down marker, and he's going to be short. Knocked down right at about the 41 yard line, or see where they mark it. And yeah, they're going to mark it right at the 40 yard line, and the hit put on him by Cameron Beck. Watch this. Mr. Beck. The inside linebacker out of Sacramento, California, came up to make the hit. That'll bring up a fourth down. And Beck looks like he's a little shaken up on the play. And the official will call a timeout because the player is down on the sideline right uh, near the field of play. I tell you what, that's pretty good for Chris Gibson. I mean, he took a lick on that sideline by four of the Texas Southern Tigers, and he's still walking, and one of the Tigers seems to be a little bit shaken up on that sideline over there. These two teams have been playing for a long, long time, and this series goes back a long, long way. Probably 1946 was when I think these two teams first met. And, of course, this is the 23rd edition of the Labor Day Classic. They've split the last four meetings. Texas Southern has won 18 of the last 21 Labor Day Classics, including a 17-14 win a year ago on a last few second field goal. We're going to step aside. You're watching Watching back on campus, presented by Dix Sporting Goods. Are these numbers right? I believe that was Lonnie Carr who was shaken up at his fourth down, and Prairie View is going to go for it on fourth and two. They think they're going to try to draw Texas Southern off sides. I don't think they're going to really go for it. Do you think so? I wouldn't think so at this point. You're in your own 40 yard line. Well, there they go. <laughs> Well, they got it. First down. They got the first down. <laughs> See? 
You're not a gambling coach, are you? <laughs> hey, that's why Coach Frazier's on the sideline, and I'm up here in the booth because I probably would have punted that football. But I like the move here. I mean, hey, it's early in the season. No one was in the A-gap. I mean, that gap in between the center and the guard was uncovered. Hey, take a shot and go for it. I'm sure that's some situation where the quarterback knows if it doesn't look good, maybe we're going to let the clock run down and punt it. But, hey, if it looks good and I think I can get it, go on and snap the ball and get the first down. And they got the first down. Fulgham was the linebacker who had to come up to make the stop and they get and, and gamble on fourth down and they come up with it at the 45. Here's the pitch to the left side trying to cut back inside and back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a yard or two on the play was again the running back Babers who's been the workhorse in the backfield before he was stopped by Valmore Matt Valmore defensively junior out of Jones High here in Houston Texas we're in the first quarter no score 713 to go between Prairie View and Texas Southern these two coaches know each other very well they both were a part of the Bowie State University coaching staff when Henry Frazier of Prairie View was the head coach Steve Wilson was a defensive coach over there they try to run to the left side this time with Calvin Harris the sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale Florida but he could not get around the corner yeah, as he was stopped by Derek Gray. I think what someone needs to tell Calvin Harris is you get seven points when you get into the end zone. He was heading towards the sideline and he didn't realize that the guy was blocking him out. If he would have just stopped and turned up the field and went straight north and south, I think that could have been a positive play. The blocking wasn't that bad, but he just kind of misread what he was trying to do as a runner. Bert Johnson also there to make the stop in his third down and 12. Now for Prairie View. From the shotgun, Gibson going up top. Has a man there, and it's incomplete. Good defense. Downfield for Texas Southern, and on the defensive side is Joe Gulabo. And I like what Prairie View was doing. I mean, they were last in the conference in passing last year. They didn't have one receiver with over 10 catches. So, I mean, what they have to do is take chances and go down the field. I mean, here, a guy almost makes the play and has a second chance to catch it. They may not, they may not be completing these long passes, but what they have to show Texas Southern is that we're going to pass the ball. We're going to attempt to make plays downfield in the passing game. So, Fagard will be back to attempt his second punt of the day. Let's see what the official... Twelve men on the field. They didn't get the special teams. They're still trying to work out some of the kinks there. Who should be in there? Who should be off? They had twelve men on the field. Fortunately, for Texas Southern, it wasn't a fourth and two or fourth and three situation where it would have given Prairie View a first down. First game of the year, you expect some of those substitution areas. Of course, they don't have the four preseason games like the NFL. They don't get dry runs to go after. No, they don't. Forty-five yarder was Fagard's first attempt here is Daniel Davis trying to get back down the field and nothing doing he's dropped right at about the 15 yard line and another good punt for the freshman Brady Fagard from Humble Texas and Humble High no score here in Houston Labor Day Classic 2007 version under six minutes to go first quarter <laughs> Jeez. No score here in the first quarter between Prairie View and Texas Southern. And don't forget the FIFA U-17 World Cup continues on ESPNU Sunday morning. It's two games. First at 2.45 Eastern. Argentina takes on Nigeria. Then at 5.45 a.m. Eastern, it's England facing Germany. It's the FIFA U-17 World Cup on ESPNU Sunday. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Edgecombe, play action. Going deep. Davis. It fell between Davis and Osborne. Both of them went to vicinity, and both of them can fly. And it was a matter of who wants the ball, right? And I think Daniel Davis probably should have been a little bit more aggressive and went to get that ball because it looked like he was waiting for Osborne to catch it. Good play fake here, pump fake to the left, and putting it up the field. And you can see Davis is the guy that's running with it. Seemed like he had the better chance to get it, but he was kind of like the center fielder and the left fielder. He was giving Osborne the go-ahead to try to make the play. Both are small in stature. Osborne, 5'7", 160 pounds. He is the Ocho's plus two because he doesn't have an eight in his 
uniform number. I said they couldn't even put two numbers on you. He's so small, could he? <laughs> He's a little kid, but I tell you, he can really run. Yes, he can. And they tried to Davis on the little end around that time. And he's been able to do a whole lot of different things this year. Coach Steve Wilson, when you talk to him and you talk about Davis, he says he reminds him so much. And those people living in Houston of Billy White Shoes Johnson will understand those people who have been around the NFL a while, right? Yeah, I mean, of course, Steve Wilson was a great defensive back with the Denver Broncos, so he had the chance to play against White Shoes Johnson. So he really understands how hard <laughs> it was to tackle that guy when he was back in that punt return formation. Third down, nine. And they keep it on the ground. Wilson gets it up to the 20-yard line. But he's still going to be about five yards shy of a first down. So the defense of the Panthers of Prairie View, a team that ranked second in the SWAC in scoring defense a year ago, second in pass defense, fourth in run defense, and number one in total defense, and eighth in the nation in Division I AA, which this year has been changed to the FCS, as they call it, championship subdivision they're still kind of taking over where they left off a year ago Eddie. I mean coach northern is a great defensive coordinator he gets them playing seven years he spent at Grambling and what a high kick this time by Solomon and Babers drops it and falls on it fortunately for the Panthers of Prairie View that could have been disaster that spelled disaster didn't it So Prairie View will retain possession of the ball. A 44-yard punt that time by Solomon. Don't forget you can see the future stars, although we have a flag down on the, on the uh, field. And there is the, the muff, as you might want to call it, by Babers. Let's see what we have from our referee. Personal foul, number five of the receiving team, 15 yards, first and 10 for Prairie View. Edward Moby and you as they deliver two high school football games on Sunday. It kicks off at noon Eastern. The St. Xavier Bombers of Ohio facing the Stags of DeMatha from Maryland. Then at 3.30 Eastern, the Central Catholic Vikings from Pennsylvania take challenge on ESPN and ESPNU on Sunday. It is first down and 10 from their own 23-yard line. First catch good for 18 yards. Good throw and catch here by Chris Gibson. His, this guy's a senior, and he's been with Coach Frazier for a number of years, and he said he's a leader on and off the field. So he's making some good throws early on. Guys just have to get confidence and make some catches, but I really like the aggressiveness that they're having in their passing game. He split time, and we may have motion up front by the Prairie View Panthers. They split time. He did that last year with Mark Spivey at the uh, quarterback position. Started only four games. Start. Offense number 12, five yard penalty, still first down. He completed 47 of 129 passes a year ago for 460 yards, three touchdowns, and four interceptions. He's a third year at quarterback for this Prairie View team. He backed up Hill in 05. And they keep the ball on the ground, running it forward after the five-yard penalty moved it back on. That was a first and 15 play. We're at Reliance Stadium. And this is college football presented by City. Prairie View AM taking on Texas Southern. Well, Ron Franklin's not here, but it is Eddie Robinson and Charlie Neal. <laughs> Charlie, I'm sure Ron is somewhere today. Yeah, he is. He's busy today. But it's, it's somewhat, it's somewhat surprising because keep in mind that Prairie View averaged 180 yard rushing and only 70 yards per game passing. So to come out here and pass all like this. And the quarterback Gibson decides he's going to keep it. It doesn't have much room to run that time as Texas Southern's Derek Gray was right there to make the stop defensively. Yeah. So Frazier, Coach Frazier, told us he was going to come out with a spread offense and. And really emphasized the passing game. He said they had a, a great camp of passing and everything else. But I mean, I thought this guy was a runner by heart. I mean, he at Bowie State, he was a, a guy who liked to run the football. And but here he's really showing some diversity in his play calling by opening his offense up, being so aggressive with his passing. Go 
Both head coaches are serving as their team's offensive coordinator. Bad snap. Gibson has to run for it. Picks it up. Well, short of the first down by about two yards. Great defense by Texas Southern. Disaster all over the place. Enough field, but that was a great open field tackle so tackle by Lamar Heron. I mean, when you have a guy come at you that fast and get a hand on him and get him down, hey, that's a, a great play by Lamar Heron to save that first down. They're only two or three yards short of the first. So the third time today, Brady Faggard will punt it away. And again, Davis trying to get it. He feels it at the six and dances out of bounds at about the eight or nine. I don't think Mr. Davis has fair catch in his repertoire of what he's going to do today because I don't care what's going on or how many people are close around him. He realizes that I can always make the first guy miss. And I like a punt returner with that type of confidence that say, hey, I'm going to make a play. The first guy's going to miss me. I get a block or two. I'm going to get down the field. But he's not going to fair catch today. I'd be very surprised to see him do that. As a punt returner, career-wise, he's averaged eight yards per punt return. He's had one that he returned for a touchdown. His longest a year ago was 37 yards. Right now, the fourth possession for Texas Southern. Remember, they drove on their first possession all the way down the field, missed on a field goal, and that's why we have no score in the ball game. This is the deepest that they've started the day as the way out to the 20-yard line, a gain of 12. Here, just coming down here, you can see Brent, but he does it. Here he goes again. I mean, he's not going east and west. It kind of reminds me of Terrell Davis. He kind of stretches the play, but he does a good job of really setting the point and getting downhill. And he has a call once again, and this time they're pounding it on the ground. Out to the 27-yard line goes Wilson. So two straight carries. He has 19 yards, and he has the ball out to the 27-yard line, and it brings up a second down. And about three. Wilson all total for the game. Five carries, 32 yards. As I said, 17 coming on the last, or 19 coming on the last two carries. Play action this time. Roll right. Edgecombe throws. Complete. Ornay said now it's incomplete. Dropped by the tight end Marcus Justice who couldn't hold on. And good coverage by Gary Hicks, but that's good play call. I mean, you have two successful running plays on first and second down, and you come back with a play action, maybe catch a team to be a little bit too aggressive and kind of held the ball a little bit too long, but good job by Gary Hicks, the linebacker. He was out of position early on, but he was able to recover and still make the pass incomplete. Tino Edgecombe a year ago completed passes to 14 different receivers. Six of those receivers had at least 10 receptions. They are nicknamed this year for the Game planning. Again. Call it incomplete. It did go forward this time. That's the second time we've seen that dangerous play, and Steve Wilson I can't be happy with that. Yeah, these plays are easy throw and catch plays when that ball is on the ground. That's, I mean, a, that's it's a live ball, and it's a fumble when that ball is I on the I think that's a lateral. Yeah, it's very if you, dangerous. If you look at that, at, at where the quarterback threw the ball and where it uh, went out of Davis's hands, the official was very official was very generous to Texas Southern on that play. He just called it incomplete. Edgecombe looking. Has it. Complete. Into Prairie View territory. And this time holding on to it is B.J. Haith. Good for 17 yards and a first down. So for the second time today Prairie View moves or I should say Texas Southern moves into Prairie View territory across midfield as we come to the end of the first quarter here Reliance Stadium in Houston Texas no score but this drive for the Tigers of Texas Southern started their own eight and they're across midfield the FIFA as we start the second quarter here at Reliance Stadium in Houston, Texas, for this 23rd edition of the Labor Day Classic, Eddie Robinson along with Charlie Neal. And no score. Texas Southern with the ball, first and 10 at the 48 of Prairie View. In motion is Anderson, and we have flags, movement before the snap, and we have a false start against Texas Southern. When you talk about this Texas Southern team, you know, he feels... That is Coach Wilson as we listen to our referee. Snap, ball start. Offense. And 48. Five-yard penalty. Still first down.
feels that this is their year, especially with the number of, of uh, starters that are coming back, especially at the skill position. The receivers, the running backs, you know, the quarterback, all of those things. He feels this is their year. We're talking about all grown up. These are the kids he brought in when he started. Both coaches uh, can say that, you know, that they they had to work with when they took over this program. Here's Wilson, and Wilson gets back the penalty yards plus two. Charlie, we talked about early in the game that Brent Wilson didn't need to have a hundred yard day. He just needed to take some pressure off of Tino Edgecombe here and there. But Brett is very effective and he's running his football. But he's going downhill and he's averaging around five or six yards per carry. So they may want to stick with him just a little bit more because he has something going today. Well, he gets the call again and Brent Wilson is down to the 45 yard line. Where to bring up a third down, third and about seven. Will be facing Texas Southern on this one. They were 31% uh, in third down conversions a year ago. Only uh, were able to convert 41 of 131, and that's something that's very, very important in ball games, whether it's long or short yardage. Yeah, you have to continue those drives. And when you do that, is complete those third down plays. But here's the third and seven, a little bit longer than you want, but you still have to try to make these things work so you can get another set of downs. Edge cone from the shotgun. Wilson beside him. Back to pass. Quick pass out in the flat. Has it complete. Daniel Davis turns the corner down the sideline and steps out of bounds at about the 29 yard line. But he gets the first down. But he shows that quickness and elusiveness with that, uh, that reception. And if you're not a fast player, don't try this at home because you can see he should be tackled a couple times. He should not have gotten his first down. But with his speed, his ability to run sideline to sideline and still turn the corner, you have two or three Prairie View defenders who have a chance at him, and all they're getting is shoestrings and missed tackles, and he's still able to get that first down. This guy is extremely quick and fast, and I think he knows it also. That's why you talk about, you know, you don't want people to run east and west. You want them to run north and south. Unless but he fast. can run north, south, east, and west all at the same time. <laughs> Here's Tino Edgecombe rolling right. Has it complete out in the flat. And this one is complete to what? To Courtney, the fullback. Beckton Courtney out of Memphis. And fairly high. And Courtney finally stopped by Gary Hicks. There you see uh, Tino Edgecombe once again getting a lot of people involved in the passing game. He's thrown the tight ends, fullbacks, multiple wide receivers. So everyone is getting a chance to touch the football. And what that does is really keep an attacking defense like Fairview off balance. You don't know where this offense is going next. Well, they weren't sacked a lot last year either, this uh, Texas Southern team. And we're going to get a holding penalty as Wilson turns the corner, is down the sideline and knocked out of bounds. But this one came from the umpire. Normally when you see him throw that flag, we've got holding in the offensive line. And that's what it's going to be. Keep in mind, this isn't the slouch of a defense. This defense last year was number eight in the country, number one in the conference. And those guys know how to get after it. Had 32 sacks in 2006. I mean, those guys know how to play real good defense at Prairie View, but Texas Southern is really just keeping them off balance. Great play calling by Steve Wilson. Holding so offense, number 73, 10-yard penalty on the previous spot. Replay, second down. That was the center, Aaron DeLong, a senior transfer from California from Riverside Community College out of Corona, California, guilty of the holding penalty. So it brings the ball all the way back to about the 34-yard line. We're to be second down and 15. Edgecomb again, throwing out in the flat. It's complete. But once the knee goes down in college ball, the whistle blows as Daniel Davis was on the receiving end. He came into today's game with 64 career receptions and seven career touchdowns. Had 34 receptions a year ago. And against Prairie View last season in this same game, he had two receptions, 52 yards, but he also caught a key touchdown. Edgecombe threw four pair of touchdowns against Prairie View last year. Edgecombe standing in there. Complete again inside the 30. That was a third down play. 
and not much running room for him there as the defense was all on top of that. Zach East was leading the way defensively. A yeah, good defense by Prairie. But like I said, these guys had 32 sacks last year. They don't get the sack here, but they just make the quarterback move around in the pocket. It's a third and ten situation, and he can't look downfield because there's so much pressure on him in the pocket, so he has to take a dump off. So that's just as good as a, as a sack as far as the effectiveness from the defensive side of the football. 11 of 15, 100 yards for Edgecombe so far, and now a fourth down situation, and now Steve Wilson's going to call a timeout and talk it over. They may go for it on fourth down. A year ago on fourth down conversions, they went for it 17 times and were six times that they were successful. The FIFA U-17 World Cup continues right here on ESPNU Sunday morning. It'll be two games. The first one coming to you at 2.45 a.m. Eastern. It'll be Argentina taking on Nigeria. I know you'll be watching that one, Eddie. Then at 5.45 a.m. Eastern, it'll be England facing Germany. It's the FIFA U-17 World Cup on ESPNU Sunday. For more information, go to ESPNU.com. Well, I'm a night owl, Charlie, but I tell you, 245, is, that's the middle of the night. <laughs> I'll probably see the 545 game. I'll be trying to get up to get to the airport. <laughs> so on fourth down, let's see what Steve Wilson and the Texas Southern Tigers do. You know, one of the things, that you look at this Texas Southern team, and you talk about it, they say, well, they probably took the biggest hit on the defensive side of the ball, especially with the loss of all... Uh, American safety Stacy Thomas and cornerback Kendrick Dunn along with linebackers Robert Napier and Vince Davis they're also trying to fill the void left by the defensive lineman Contavious Jones and Mike Berry so you know it's very interesting as you saw the numbers on Brent Wilson as far as running is concerned but they're going to go forward on fourth down here the ball at the 29 of Prairie View 11 30 to go in the second quarter and no score Let's see what we have. We want to push the play clock back up to 25. So it's a fourth down. From the shotgun, Edge Cole. Let's it fly. Has it complete in the middle of the field for first down. And I believe the reception was made by Anderson. It was good for 14 yards. And what a throw. It was Mike Anderson on the reception. Running a deep dig right right here. You can tell. Look at the time that he has to step up and throw that football. Only a three-man rush by Prairie View. And when you're going to rush three, you know the quarterback is going to have time to throw the ball. And he's feeling real confident right now. He's completing a lot of passes. And when you can throw those deep, in, deep dig routes, deep in routes on third and nine and get a first down, hey, everything is working for you today. He won the first two games for his team a year ago, got injured, and missed a couple of games as Wilson tries to get the call around the corner and Zach East says no way Jose Zach East with a bad attitude I mean this guy is the leader of this defense man <laughs> Zach East and Wilson we talked about them in the opening and <laughs> look at this yes sir that's how you play linebacker right there I mean you hit him and then you knock him back you know buddy Ryan when I was a linebacker say hey, don't just hit him but knock him back make him lose yards and now it's what second and 11 after that big hit by Zach East not only lose yards almost lost his helmet <laughs> from under center this time edge Cole. play action he's going to roll right throws to Wilson coming out of the backfield and he's tattooed once again on the far sideline this time and coming up the tattooing was more Ed Moore the junior out of San Antonio Texas see that's what happens when you have one big hit you have a guy like Zach East comes up make a big aggressive hit now look here's Edward Moore on the outside hey I'm gonna get a chance to hit him too he's like <laughs> you know, everybody give their feeds off of that one big hit on defense and you need that guy with that attitude to come up in there and get everybody motivated and ready to play and that guy is Zach East on this prayer view defense but what makes Edgecombe so dangerous is you don't know what he's going to do from one play to another. I mean, he's handing off. He's great. He's almost like a magician with the play action. 
and then he's handing off to the to Wilson coming out of the backfield. He's been working out of the shotgun. When he works under center, he might take off and run with it. A lot of diversity in that Texas Southern offense. And give credit to Coach Steve Wilson and Ted White, also the quarterback coach, having edge calm to have those multi-dimensionals that he can do so many things. Delay of game, offense, number one, five-yard penalty, still third down. So third down now, and uh, we'll call it 13. Ball all the way back to the 18-yard line. They have to get to this five-yard line to pick up the first down. We'll see what Prairie View defense does. Last time in a third and long situation, they only rushed three, didn't get a lot of pressure. He stepped up and made a pass play. We'll see if they bring pressure with a four-man rush to try to blitz him. Now remember, Conway is good from about 40, 45 yards out as far as field goal kicking is concerned. This one just a little bit too high for the intended receiver, Marcus, uh, Michael Anderson, rather. So that will bring out Conway, who missed a field goal earlier in the contest on the first drive as long as a year ago was a 42 yarder and he kicked the game winning field goal of 33 yards against Prairie View in this same contest last year. This one will be a 35 yard attempt. This drive started at their own eight. Blocked. So two field goals go awry for Texas Southern. Well, at least they were smart enough not to let Prairie View pick it up and run it back. Right? <laughs> and that's a good play by Prairie View defense. I mean, the first one he missing. So they're playing that bend but don't break. Texas Southern is getting a lot of yards inside the 20s. They get to that red zone. Prairie View is playing tough and they're not able to convert on the field goals. Well, no score yet. Nine minutes to go. First half. Gerber, the baby people you've known since you were a baby, offers you a way to prepare for your child's... First down and 10, Prairie View Babers with the carry for two out to about the 22-yard line. Swarmed under by a host of white jerseys there on the defensive side. We'll talk about Prairie View, Coach Frazier. You know, he was a quarterback when he was in college. He played at Bowie State. Compiled a record of 18 3 and 1 as a starter and led his team to the NCAA playoffs in 1988 in the CIAA championship in 1989. So both of these coaches know a little bit about offense. Steve Wilson was a receiver running back at Howard University. His college career is Gibson gets the ball and this one goes incomplete. Bounces in front of the intended receiver, Anthony Whedon. And it started off with a bad snap, so it had uh, disaster written all over it from, the, from the snap all the way through the pass. Yeah, and Maurice Robinson, the center for Prairie View, he's had a couple of snaps that were higher to the left or to the right. And what that does, it just makes it difficult for the quarterback just to settle down. And he wants to have a smooth catch and throw in that shotgun formation. So Chris Gibson has been a little bit unsettled in certain situations because he doesn't know what kind of snap he's going to get from Maurice Robinson. He's had uh, his troubles completing passes so far today. Third down and 10. Here's Gibson going to the air once again. In trouble. Now tries to throw it away. And it goes incomplete. Going to bring up fourth down. He did get it out of his hands. The arm was going forward. And he had pressure coming from the backside. Oh. Let's look at it once again. See who put the pressure on him. Gets a good snap this time. I mean, the guys up front are blocking for as long as they can. But at some point, hey, you got to get the ball out your hand, big guy. I mean, the guys of Texas Southern, they play defense also. You can't just sit there and keep looking and looking down the field. You have to make a decision. Receivers from Prairie View have to have to do a better job of getting open and giving Chris Gibson the target to throw, throw to down the field. So they didn't gain much on that drive from their own 22. And Daniel Davis, the very dangerous return man, is back to receive this punt from Fagard. And <laughs> Davis says boo. <laughs> like he was gonna pick that he ball. hates it when he can't return that punt. I mean that just kills him right there when he doesn't have a chance to run that thing back. Well Fagard has uh, done a pretty good job punting today for a freshman. Here's Brent Wilson running it. 
Yeah, I mean, Brett Wilson's a guy that missed the last three games off an of injury. He's just excited to be back out there and play. Look at his touch. I mean, all of his carries, they look exactly the same. He presses to the outside, then he gets north and south and gets up the field. But you kind of like that because this guy is very an aggressive runner. He has a lot of pep in his step. I mean, that end ankle injury from last year is gone. And this guy can really control the football game for Texas Southern. I know they want to pass and get, you know, Daniel Davis with all of that type of stuff and going. But he has to run the football effectively for them to have a good day today. And to keep that balance on the offensive side, and he has the ball he into goes. the secondary, still on his feet, and runs out of bounds at the 45-yard line, a 22-yard gain on that play for Brent Wilson. Just good blocking up front. I mean, he gets into the secondary extremely fast, and to me, it just seems like he has a little bit more energy, a little bit more fire in his, in his giddy up than the rest of the guys on the Prairie View defense. And they're having trouble keeping up with him so far. Again, Wilson on the carry back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. A host of dark jerseys are there to meet him on the defensive side of the ball from the Prairie View defense. So far, Brent Wilson averaging 6.7 yards per carry. You remember a couple of years ago, he gained over 1,000 yards. 1,032 to be exact. Scored 10 touchdowns, had 10 pass receptions, and scored a touchdown on a pass reception last year. Held at just 441 yards, four touchdowns, four receptions, and one touchdown on a reception. Edgecombe on second down after no gain on the last play. From the shotgun this time. Stands in the pocket. Throws wide open in the middle of the field is a tight end, Justice. And Justice, another first down inside the 40 to the 39 of Prairie View. A gain of 22 on that one. Look at Edge Cobb's eyes. And he's looking across the field. He's looking at the short receiver going across. He's looking to the left, to the right. Finally comes to the big tight end, Marcus Justice. This is a guy that really knows what he's doing and where he wants to go with the football. I mean, Tino is doing a great job of just really settling down in the pocket and give the offensive line credit. I mean, he's not getting hit, so he has a chance to look to three and four receivers. And here's a delay draw. Here's Brent Wilson almost fumbled the ball as he was hit that time by Zach East in the hole. But he managed to hold on. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down. You know, Texas Southern started off 2-0 last year also, of course, with Tino Edge come at quarterback, but then he gets hurt and they lose the next three games. I mean, because Steve Wilson and this Texas Southern offense knows that this guy in the lineup, Tino Edgecombe, they can be extremely effective. And also, you add a healthy Bretton Wilson, too. I mean, this offense is hard to stop. He had three games, Edgecombe, last year, which he passed over 200 yards. Against Prairie View last year, he was 16 of 22 for 232 yards. This one is intercepted. Intercepted. Or are they saying incomplete? They said it hit the ground. I thought it was intercepted that time by Val Ford. He looked like he came up with it. The junior out of Camp Springs, Maryland, went to Bishop McNamara High up there in Camp Springs, up in Prince George County. Played in the Good Samaritan Bowl up there. Yeah, he sold me on the interception, but you can see it hit the ground. Good call by the referee. Yeah, it came out. But what you do, Charlie, is just like he did. You jump up and you act like you caught it. Make the referee make a call. But it was a bad throw by Edgecombe. He threw it just a little bit behind the receiver and gave him a chance to make a play on that football. There's Edgecombe taking off. Here's a flag, and we're going to get holding in the backfield. He was short. I believe it's going to again be against. This one might go against, uh, well, let's see. It might be the center. DeLong. Holding offense number 73. 10 yard penalty for the previous time. We play third down. Oh, it'll be third down all over again. That's the second holding call on Aaron DeLong, the senior out of Corona, California today. One of the things you've noticed Texas Southern has done is they've been able to move the ball, but they've been shooting themselves in the foot when they get across midfield. Prairie has done a good job of bending and not breaking. Defense, that's absolutely right. But they haven't been able to do anything offensively, that is, Prairie View so far today. It's called back on third and long. Under pressure. Steps out of the 
pocket somehow he got under a bunch of rushing defenders and was able to get down to about the 44 yard line that's a that's the Houdini trick everyone's coming here you just duck like whoop there I go Ashcomb is on the loose once again I mean he does a lot with the play but at the end man you don't want to take those shots you're gonna have to learn how to slide on this uh, this turf out here you don't want to keep taking those big hits from the quarterback slide. so Solomon on the punt of the way this is his third punt of the afternoon he was the fifth leading punter in the SWAC a year ago now Prairie View calls a timeout we have five minutes to go here just under five minutes in the second quarter next week uh, Texas Southern is at home they'll play Alabama State while Prairie View has to hit the road they'll be in Los Angeles for the Angel City Classic when they take on the Aggies of North Carolina A&T and don't forget you can see the future stars of football today on ESPN and ESPNU as they deliver two high school football games on Sunday. It kicks off at noon with St. Xavier, the Bombers of Ohio, taking on the Stags of the Map of Maryland. And at 3.30 Eastern, the Central Catholic Vikings from Pennsylvania will play the Northmont Ohio Thunderbolts. The 2007 Burger King Kirk Herb Street, Ohio versus USA Challenge on ESPN and ESPNU on Sunday. Fourth down, punting situation. Babers is the deep man to receive the punt of Solomon. High kick, nice. But it goes out of bounds. Let's see how many yards they get on it. And to spiral, no return. 451. That's the time remaining. And they're going to spot this ball all the way up at the 20 yard line. From their own 20, first down and 10, Prairie View has had its problems so far this afternoon. Although it's not hurt them, they've had some miscues. Here's a drop by Babers. And also you see a couple of high snaps. Maurice Robinson, he sent some of them high left, some of them to the right and left. And it just really makes the quarterback unsettled. I mean, Chris Gibson just can't get into a, a groove where he can catch that snap and know it's going to be there consistently. So they have to pick that up if they're going to stay into the shotgun formation. Their fifth possession of the day. Here's a little end around play or fake end around, and Gibson decides to keep it and scrambles for about nine yards on the play. Chris Gibson on the carry. Their drive, they have not been into Texas Southern territory at all this afternoon. The, the furthest they've gotten is to the 49 yard line. Well, the score is still 0 0. Charlie is <laughs> It's not too bad, but they do have to pick it up offensively just for the standpoint that you don't want to start losing on the time of possession because it seems like Texas Southern is able to really move the ball. So you have to match what they're doing just to give your defense a break. That'll make some adjustments and, and get their win also. This time, it is not a fake as Babers will get the carry and lose about two yards back to the 26-yard line. Good defensive play there for Texas Southern. Coming up with the big uh, tackles, Derek Gray, number 57 there. Yeah, he just kind of stretches that thing out and is able to make the play for a loss against a, a speedy guy in Babers. Once you get your hands on those little guys, they're easy to, to knock them down. It's just a matter of catching up with them. Derek Gray out of Silver Spring, Maryland. Both of these teams have a number of players from the Maryland area because both of these coaches spend a lot of time in that area. Steve Wilson, of course, was a head coach at Howard for many years. Whedon was the intended receiver, and I'll tell you, he almost lost his head on that particular play. Who was that coming in there with a vengeance for Texas Southern? Yeah, Whedon did the right thing. When, when you almost lose your head, you just keep running to the sideline. He didn't look back. He didn't want to know what that truck was that almost hit him. I'm not trying to get a license plate. I just want to get out of here. Gibson still only one completion for the afternoon. So he's struggling as is the the Prairie View team even though like you said the advantage is the score is still nothing zero, nothing zero. <laughs> from their own 26 backguard with the punt again and here's the fielding by Daniel Davis makes a move on the near sideline and brings it out to about the 37 yard line but he'll scare you to death won't he <laughs> especially with a line drive punt don't forget coming up at halftime on Sports Center U with 
Noah Galindo and Steve Israel, the big upset at the big house today. Of course, Michigan losing. Emotional win at Virginia Tech. And will it be revenge at Cal? And of course, Appalachian State coming away. They blocked the field goal and preserved the win. Julian Rocks with a 24-yard field goal with 26 seconds to go to give Appalachian State the defending 1AA champs, the two-time defending 1AA champs to win. That definitely hurts the whole Big Ten, that loss right there. Edgecombe under pressure, and he's going to go down. And coming up with it is Val Ford with the sack. And I don't know what the blocking scheme was on this play, but they need to change it. I mean, Poor Edgecombe, Edgecombe never had a chance. They have two guys coming up there. But give Prairie View credit. I mean, these guys, they're very aggressive on defense. So now they're tired of them sitting there and watching Tino Edgecombe complete passes on. They're going to start bringing some pressure off the edge and kind of bring the fight to him in his own backfield. This is a team, this Prairie View team, that at one point lost 80 straight ball games. And they finally uh, starting to turn their program around. It is second down. And a lot of yards to go. That's a lateral out in the flat. And nothing doing that time as Ed Moore was there to make the stop defensively for the Panthers of Prairie View. So the defense is, again, they've picked up where they left off a year ago, ranked eighth in the nation. They led the SWAC in total defense, and they're doing a great job. And you can see right here, look at the Prairie View cornerback, number five. He's really attacking that play very aggressively. I mean, early on, they were kind of sl slacking off and letting them complete that pass. That's Edward Moore. Now, the next thing with that is Steve Wilson. I mean, he's an old chess player himself. Look for them to kind of go up top. They'll fake that little screen play and then also throw a deep ball. So you still have to play honest on defense. You can't just always play the play that just happened. There's no question about it. Don't forget the FIFA U-17 World Cup continues on ESPNU Sunday morning with two games at 2.45 a.m. Eastern. Argentina takes on Nigeria, then at 5.45 a.m. Eastern, it's England taking on Germany. It's the FIFA U-17 World Cup on ESPNU Sunday. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. This is third and 22 facing the Tigers of Texas Southern. From their own 24 yard line, make it the 26 yard line. And Prairie View has been playing them very tough. I think Prairie View was kind of thrown off a little bit early on because they came out with the five wide receivers and the shotgun and all of the passing. But now that it's settled down into a regular old football game, Prairie View's defense is kind of picking up from where they left off last year. And of course, it's still a 0 0 game. They've given up some yards, but one missed field goal, one blocked field goal, score is still 0 0. Well, let's see what they come up with. Shotgun is where Edgecombe is working from. Pump fake on the near side, and he's down. The pass is complete, but they actually lost yards on the play because the receiver fell down, and they lost yards back to the 23. They lost three yards on the completion. So to bring up a punting situation, a minute 56, and Prairie View, I believe, is going to call a timeout. And they're going to try to set up a block on this punting situation, which will give them great field position and the chance to score with under two minutes to go. I mean, you think you have to think aggressive like that if you coach Frazier. Here's a chance with two minutes left, a minute 55 less than left in the half. You can get good field position either by blocking this punt or getting a good return. I mean, you're in a situation to run your two minute offense, maybe get three points, maybe even get a touchdown before the half ends. Texas Southern lost 15 yards on that drive. Remember, Davis gave him the ball at the 38. They're going to be punting it from the 23 right now. I tell you what, the fans, I mean, we're almost at halftime. You know, you have the bands and all the excitement with halftime with a 0 0 football game. So the fans are kind of looking to the forward to this halftime. <laughs> Wake everybody up over here. <laughs> and they're talking about the Battle of the Bands. They had one uh, last night on Texas Southern's campus and the step show with the fraternities. Very, very interesting. Always lots of fun. Always lots of fun. Prairie View and Texas Southern, they'll be battling at halftime here. I believe it won't be a nothing, nothing score, though. <laughs> Solomon back to punt it. Gets it away. Good kick. Babers fulfilled it at the 40. He had room. Oh. He had room. Great tackle. <laughs> he had room. Do not let go, says Joe Lewis. <laughs> Hold on for dear life. 
and rule number one of being a good punt returner, you always have to make the first man miss. I mean, we can't block everybody. I mean, he, if he could make Joe Lewis miss right here, I mean, he has at least another 15 or 20 yards before the next Texas Southern defender will show up. So from their own 34-yard line, their sixth possession of the day with a minute 41 to go, no score. Here come the Prairie View Panthers with Chris Gibson, the senior out of Forestville, Maryland. Transferred from Bowie State, working from the shotgun with an empty backfield. Under pressure, steps out, has some room on the right side. Make up the left side for him. And steps out of bounds at about the 35 yard line, unfortunately. And he ran right into the arms of one of the Texas Southern defenders who really put the tattoo on him right there. You're looking at Texas Southern's Joseph Gobo who came up with a big hit. And Chris just has to be a little bit more decisive in the pocket. Here he, he goes out of bounds and takes an unnecessary hit. But when you have six receivers out in the formation, or five receivers out, I mean, you don't have anyone in the back, so it's empty. You can't sit there and look around. You have to know where you're going with the football. Here's another situation where he's going to have to catch, catch the ball from the center, make a decision, and deliver the football. Second and ten. No gain on the play as a complete. And coming up with the reception is Edia out of Austin, Texas. Went to Davy Crockett High. And that's the first completion or second second completion today for Chris Gibson of all the passes he's thrown clock still running with a minute five to go now he's going to keep it on the ground and we have a flag down he has the first down he's into Texas Southern Territory that's the first time they've crossed midfield but let's see what the penalty marker is about I think it's on Texas Southern I mean that guy got an extremely great jump on the defensive side of Bob I, mean, I know he's fast but offside Defense number 57. The penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. So again, Derek Gray was guilty of the penalty, so they'll take the, the results of the play and decline the penalty. As you see, Derek Gray coming off the right side, and they're across midfield, that is Prairie View for the first time today. Now Steve Wilson wants a timeout and talk things over on the defensive side. What is he saying? What are you thinking right now? They've crossed midfield, 52 seconds to go. You know, Gibson, of course, starting to, to play a little better than he did in the first half. Well, if I'm early Texas, in the first yeah, half. Yeah, if I'm Texas Southern, I'm going to make Gibson make a play. Why give him a situation where you, you do something crazy or, or, or have a situation where you're uneven on defense? Just let him do something special because he hasn't really shown you anything. He has two completions in the whole first half. Just play good zone coverage and force Purview to do something positive. Of course, uh, Henry Frazier, he's the seventh coach at Prairie View since 1991. And you see the bands getting ready. They got their game face on also, don't they? They're ready to go. <laughs> I, mean, I think we have the, the marching storm from Prairie View versus the ocean of soul from Texas Southern. So, oh, yeah. Should be a great halftime show. And there you see Henry Frazier. Concerned Henry Frazier. The third. He has passed the win mark of the previous six coaches already in four years. And here's a pass long as a holding penalty. I mean, you're talking about holding. <laughs> That's got to be holding. I mean, he had the jersey stretched. It wasn't even subtle. <laughs> he couldn't even hide that one. Defense, defense number 32. It's a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Kenneth Jones was the man he was beating, so he said, Well, at least I'm not gonna let me give up six. Well, I may six, give up three, but I'm not gonna give up six. But he was beaten by two steps, and like you said, Charlie, instead of giving up the touchdown, he get the holding penalty. It's a 15 yard penalty, but you still have a chance to keep him out of the end zone and live to play another day. Unlike the pro game where it would have been a spot foul at the it's only uh, a 15 yard or seventh penalty against Texas Southern. 53 yards. Preview hasn't completed a deep ball yet, but they're taking chances and they're, and they're going downfield and they're trying to. So all you need is one person to make a play and you're in the end zone. 45 seconds to go in the half. Gibson throws, has it complete. The move in the middle of the field and inside the 30 down to about the 21 yard line. I believe that's Mark Eisen. 
Oh, no, that's 89 on the reception for the Panthers of Prairie View. It looked like the center is kind of settled Sean down. Stevens, right. Well, yeah, Maurice Robinson giving him a good quarterback exchange as Chris is catching and throwing the football. Sean Stevens on it. Here's Gibson at the 10. And he's got a first and goal. We have a flag down. But it's first and goal. Let's see if that is a face mask. Or maybe against Prairie View because the Texas Southern players are clapping their hands. It is a holding penalty against the Panthers. 20 seconds to go in the half. Holding offense number 81. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run for replay first down. Mark Eisen, the receiver, number 81. There it is. See, these guys don't do anything suddenly. I mean, they just make sure everybody sees it. The guy sitting up in the in the cheap seats. <laughs> easy, easy call for the ref. But if you're not cheating, you're not trying. So hey, you guys are being competitive, and sometimes you just want to make that block. I mean, you want to make that block and get your guy in the end zone, and you just do a little bit too much. Ticking. The last play of that. And that was a good no call because if anything, the receiver made more contact with the defender than the defender made on the receiver and the intended receiver for Texas Southern was Riante Jones number six and stand like you said good no call he let the guy attempt he boots it through the uprights as the time expires here in the first half of the 23rd edition of the Labor Day Classic Pedro Ventura he's the holder on short field goals he hit the long one that time we're in Houston Texas at Reliance Stadium Prairie View 3 nothing they lead it at halftime Third edition of the Labor Day Classic Prairie View taking on Texas Southern University and uh, of course Eddie when you talk about the first half it's been a defensive battle between these two teams well both teams have come out passing the football which was some of a surprise because Prairie View averaged 180 yards rushing the game last year so still 0-0 zero, 3-0 zero, uh, game but a lot more football to play well we'll see what that offense from uh, Texas Southern can take place here in the second half we didn't see much of it in the first half as we look here as they get the ball going with Brent Wilson trying to run it yeah well Brent Wilson I mean, he's definitely the guy that you want to get going out here I mean he's been going down here with the football they may want to give him a couple more carries because this guy can definitely be a factor there Zach he's mixed needs him in the hole but for the most part he's controlled the football game when he's given him and he's been given a chance certainly has as we get ready to start the second half Prairie View will get the ball to start the second half remember they won the opening toss or the, the I should say the coin toss but deferred to Texas Southern in the first half and they'll get the ball to start the second half and there you see the deep men for the Panthers of Prairie View they're leading it by a score of three to nothing here. Here's the deep kick. Babers fakes the reverse and is up across the 20 and at the 25, and that's where his forward progress is stopped and a penalty flag comes out. Now let's see what the penalty marker is all about. 17 yard return for Mr. Babers. Barnes. 
Lawrence, the fullback. Junior out of Bay City, Texas. Guilty of the block in the back. So they'll start right now at their own 15 yard line to start the second half. 3 0 is the score on a 34 yard field goal by Ventura. Here's Gibson trying to go down the left side. Run out of bounds right in front of the Texas Southern bench by Chris Salvan, the senior out of Miami Edison Hive. Earlier, we talked early, uh, Eddie, about the fact that both of these coaches are in their fourth year. They need to win. And we talked to Steve Wilson. We talked about the pressure because they have dismissed their basketball coach and they're in the process of trying to fill that position at Texas Southern. And when we asked him about the pressure to win, he said, the pressure would be if I didn't have any players. Yeah, they feel good about the squads that they have on the team right now. And I think both of these teams, regardless of this game, can finish this year with a good winning record or a good solid performance because they both have a lot of talent on the field. Whedon was the man in motion. Whedon has the reception on the pass from Gibson. And he's out across the 30. Has the first down at the 30-yard line. So Gibson, if you go back to last year, he found his team down 14 to nothing as Edgecombe threw two touchdown passes, one to Daniel Davis, one to Ramon Gilmore. But then in the third quarter, Prairie View started to come back. Gibson with a 22-yard pass, and then he tied it on a 10-yard run. Gibson can run the ball with 12-18 left, and they lost it on a field goal late in the contest. Here's Babers going to the left side. Gets around the corner. Babers. Boy, they must have fed him something in the locker room at halftime, didn't they? The I offense what, is coming out with a vengeance. I'll tell you what, I, I know Coach Frazier, and, and he's a great guy, but I don't know what type of speech he gave him in that locker room while this band was performing. <laughs> but he has Prairie View out here ready to play. You can see Babers. He has he has jets in his pants. This guy is extremely fast, and he gets around the corner. I mean, he took a hit towards the end, but man, this little kid can run. I mean, you don't want to take a lot of big shots like that because you're a small guy, but he's a speedy receiver who knows what to do also in the backfield. He had almost a thousand yards rushing in high school at Westbury High here in Houston, Texas. 15 touchdowns and was a two-star athlete. They say when you ask Coach Henry Frazier about the top athletes on the team, he'll tell you he's one of the top ones. On well, this team. And he really likes his receivers. We haven't seen a lot of them because they haven't had a lot of completions, but he kind of compares them to the fun bunch with the Washington Redskins because these guys are small and very fast and very elusive. So, of course, if you know Coach Frazier, he's from the D.C. area. He's a big Redskins fan anyway. And no question about it. In fact, you had to bring him a Redskins bag, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Wheaton is the man in motion from the shotgun. Gibson. And he has a complete again to Whedon, and Whedon is down near midfield at about the 49-yard line. Again, we'll call it a seven. Anthony Whedon out of Stafford, Texas. And only 5'5", 155 pounds. These, these little smurfs, as yeah, we like those, to call them, those right? Those little guys are hard to catch up with, but I mean, I like what Frazier and Offense coordinator Michael Bryan is doing. I mean, they tried to go with the deep passes early. Now he's just doing taking the sharp completions. This time, Gibson keeps the ball up the gut. He's down inside the 30. 20, 10, 5, touchdown Prairie View. You Gibson all the way. And you called it. You said that this guy is a thrower and a runner. So now you see his running ability on a big running play, giving Prairie View the 9 0 lead here early in the third quarter. 51 yards on the run by Chris Gibson who ran for five touchdowns a year ago and averaged 3.3 yards per carry. He only threw for three touchdowns. But look at this run. Yeah, what they're doing, they're faking that end around play. They've given that ball to the receiver a couple times. This time the quarterback keeps it, gets good blocking up the middle, makes one or two guys miss. He has the speed to get it into the end zone. Now for the point after. Ventura. And it's good. And it's a 10-0 ball game. And it is Prairie View. Last year, they had to rally from 14 points down to Texas Southern. This year, they were up 3-0 at halftime. And they start the third quarter. They drive all the way down the field. 85 yards. A 51-yard run by Chris Gibson. 
Don't forget, coming up, we'll go inside the X's and O's of these teams. Along with Eddie Robinson, Charlie Neal here in Houston, Texas at Reliance Stadium where Prairie View has just taken a 10 to nothing lead. We're in the third quarter with 13.27 to go in the contest. That last drive was an 85-yard drive. By Prairie View, they take the second half kickoff and they go all the way down the field. Remember, in the first half, Eddie, they never crossed midfield but one time. And uh, that was when they kicked the field goal just before halftime, the last play of the half. Here's a short kick. And it comes down to one of the up men for Texas Southern, who brings it up and gives them great field position with Chris Salvant bringing it down. There's a penalty marker down, right shy of midfield. And they tried to pooch kick. They want to keep the ball out of Daniel Davis's hands, of course, for Texas Southern. But I mean, sometimes when you get the pooch kick and they catch it and they run it and everything, now you're at the 50 yard line and you don't know who this penalty is on. You're almost better just to kick it deep and take your chances of tackling a Daniel Davis in the open field. Charles Lewis is our referee. Quite a discussion on where we need to put the ball, whether it's on one side. Of midfield or the other. Dead ball, personal foul number 91 of the receiving team, 15 yard penalty, first and 10 for Texas Southern. So it's Zach Aninde out of San Marcos, California. There he is. He's guilty of the personal foul, dead ball, moves the ball all the way back to the 33 yard line. That's a big break for Fairview because Texas Southern would have had that ball at midfield if not for that penalty. No question about it. So with a trailing 10 to nothing, let's see if Texas Southern can get something going here. Here's a pass. And it's complete to Haith. Haith has the first down at the 47-yard line. We're we talking about going inside the box. We had some things that we talked about at the beginning of the telecast as far as key matchups we talked about Brent Wilson we talked about Zach East the linebacker let's check them out and see how they will match up here inside the box I the two players back the pass edge cold out the flat and that was Brent Wilson on the reception but a good play defensively over there by Ed Moore yeah, and Brenton Wilson, here's a guy who's been running the football, but he's also effective out of the backfield. So just trying to get him the ball as much as you can. I mean, Edgecombe is doing a good job of, of looking downfield and, and getting the ball to the receiver. He's just about had everyone on the offense touch the football today. Tight ends, running backs, wide receivers. So very, a lot of versatility out of this offense so far. Well, last year he completed passes to 14 different receivers. And out of those 14, six had 10 receptions. So... Edgecombe does know how to spread the wealth around. Here's a screen pass. And Brent Wilson had the reception. Zach East tackled him, picks it up. And now they're going to call it uh, incomplete. Or they call a fumble. They call it a fumble. They call it a Prairie, Prairie View's ball. And Prairie View gets the ball, the first turnover of the ball game. And that was we were matching up those two. And Zach East caused the fumble and managed to recover it. I mean, you called him in here, the middle linebacker. He, he's the guy that has to make the play on his screen. And look at Zach East, man. He swims one guy, gets around soon as soon as Brent Wilson touches the ball. I mean, he just knocks it right out of his hand. But number seven, I mean, look at his eyes. He takes a false step. Man, that's just a great athletic play. I mean, and my thing as a linebacker, those big 300-pound guys should never get their hands on the linebacker. He makes a miss. He gets up in there. He makes the play, causes the fumble, and recovers it. That's all you can ask for a middle linebacker right there. The last two possessions for Prairie View have ended in points on the board. Let's see if they can continue the drive that they have. Here's Gibson going up top. That one's picked off. That one's picked off by Chris Salvan. So two back-to-back -back turnovers. Chris Salvan, the senior out of Edison High in Miami, who had an interception a year ago, comes up with a big one here for Texas Southern. 
and it couldn't have come at a better time. But this is just a great athletic play. I mean, Prairie View's been taking shots deep all day. Hey, but Chris Alvin, don't try it on my side of the football field. He goes up and catches that ball at the highest point, turns from a defender to the offensive guy. Hey, I can get this football just like you. That's just a great athletic play by Chris Alvin, not only to get in position to make the play, but also to bring the ball in and have the catch and get that interception. Really needed that at this point in the game because Texas Southern has been kind of on their heels after that big turnover and an offensive touchdown from Prairie View in the third quarter. So from their own nine now, here's Brent Wilson at the top in the box on the right. Zach East at the bottom. Here's the pass out in the flat. Tino Edgecombe has a complete on the far sideline. And coming up with the reception is Michael Anderson out of Houston, Texas, the senior from Fur High School. Here in Houston, it was good for 11 yards, which moves the chains out to the 20-yard line on a first down for Texas Southern. Brent Wilson had a pretty good high school career, Kennedy High in Silver Spring, Maryland. And here he's trying to turn the corner, going left this time, and Zach East is there to help out his teammates to make sure that Brent doesn't get any more than four. Yeah, and Zach East has been there all, all day. I mean, Brent Wilson is, ha is having a lot of success running the football, but look at, look at Zach East, and you just kind of float along. Guys try to knock you, get past the first block, the second block, you guys kind of string them out. You come in there and help and assist on the tackle, and, and that's what you want to see. I mean, when you come at those one-back sets, and he's the middle linebacker, he's pretty much eyeing up Brent Wilson all day. Wherever he goes, that's where I want to go. I want to stay in front of him. He runs, I run, and I make the tackle. Second down and six now for Texas Southern Edgecombe again from the gun and he is sacked. He is not going to get this one off and coming up with the big defensive play is Marcus Johnson for Prairie View. I believe that was who that was. This is a good job from the defensive coordinator. Look on the right side. You have two guys coming from off the right side of the field. You only have one block. I mean, Brent Wilson blocks one of them, but he's not Superman. He can't block two guys, and they're to the back side of the quarterback. Prairie View schemes up and gets the sack in that situation. Now you have a third and 15 play. Well, you got Marcus Johnson, a young man out of Humboldt, Texas. Played only five games a year ago, and he came up with the big sack. And that moved the ball all the way back and brings up a third and long, third and 15 for Texas Southern. Edgecombe. Edgecombe gets it out in the flat, and it's Osborne on the reception, but he's not going to get away from the defense on that side, and that is Gary Hicks who's going to run him out of bounds. And Charlie, it just seems like in this second half, this third quarter, Prairie View has just really turned up the intensity another level, and Texas Southern has not responded to that as of yet. So here is a punt from Steve Solomon. Standing back to receive it is Babers, right at about his own 44-yard line. And the pressure was coming, partially and it blocked. was partially blocked. And I believe... Who came up to block it was Val Ford, got his hands on it, number three. So great defense by Prairie View. They're on a mission right now, especially here in the second half. 10.36 to go in the third quarter. 10-0, the Panthers. 376. 36 remaining third quarter, Prairie View, 10-0 right now, and they have the ball in great field position. Don't forget the FIFA youth. Sunday morning. The ball at the 27 yard line. The Texas Southern 27. And look at this. Little Bumaruski. <laughs> Man in motion. The ball is centered, and there's a flag that goes down. We may have had two people moving in motion at the same time, and that's what we have a legal shift. Well, in the Arena Football League, that would have been a great play, but in college football, it's a play. <laughs> this is a tricky situation. Texas Southern really needs to stand up and make a play and have a defensive stop because they can't let Prairie View put four points on the board. Let me go shift on the offense. Energy is declined. So Texas Southern declines the penalty. They'll make a take the results of the play they only gained about a half a yard maybe a yard on the play and it'll be second down and nine rather than first and 15. 
What do you think? Would you have taken the moved them back further from the goal line? They have a good field goal kicker, so you want to get them as far away from that, that field goal try as possible. Whedon is the man in motion. Here's Gibson standing in there, has to run now, trying to turn the corner and gains a few yards. Again, coming up to make the stop is Chris Salvin, who's the first man that got a hand on him. Here's Chris Gibson. Gibson isn't doing a whole lot in the passing game. He settled down a little more in the third quarter, but after that 51 yard run for a touchdown, he's more aggressive in finishing off the run. He seems like he has confidence when he tucks it and tries to run, and he can make people miss and be very aggressive and try to get extra yards in the running game, even though he's a quarterback. Well, even though they have not had great winning seasons here since Henry Frazier came to Prairie View, he knows how to win. He was the CIAA Coach of the Year with Bowie State in 2001. And another flag goes down. And let's see if this is going to be holding or face mask. I didn't see anybody in front of the runner. Now they're going to call holding. They are going to call holding on Prairie View. So again, like they were shooting themselves in the foot in the first half, and both teams did that with penalties at an opportune time. Holding offense number 26. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, third down. That's the running back, Calvin Harris. As you look at Henry Frazier, as I mentioned, the 2001 CIAA Coach of the Year, a career record of 37 and 45. Fourth year as the head man at Prairie View was the went and took his team to the NCAA playoffs as a quarterback at Bowie State in '88, as a coach in '99. Here's Gibson standing in there. Plenty of time. Throws a little outlet pass. And here goes Harris. Harris battling all the way down to the six. We're going to be first down and goal. Calvin Harris, the red shirt sophomore from St. Thomas Aquinas High in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, with the catch and run. Yeah, and give Calvin Harris a lot of credit. I mean, this guy hasn't been playing a whole lot today, but when he gets his opportunity, just a little dump off pass, I mean, he really makes this first down. I mean, look at all of the Texas Southern Tigers who have a chance to, to tackle him. Looks like the old Walter Payton, when he just keeps those legs turning and moving, getting towards that end zone and gets the first down. And now Prairie View, once again, is knocking at the door. And he's atoning for the previous penalty on the previous play where he was called for holding a high school all uh, Broward County down in Florida and turning the corner again is Calvin Harris. He's in for six. On a six yard run, Harris. Well, Charlie, if you're going to make a silly holding play, you come back and make a great catch and run for a first down, then you score a touchdown. And when you go to the sideline, the coach can't be mad at you. Here, you can see. Great blocking at the perimeter, but also look at downfield. Look at number one there. You have Anthony Wheaton who really just springs him and lets him walk into the end zone. And you need those receivers who are able to block at the point of attack. And it turns five-yard runs into touchdowns. And the point after by Ventura is good, and the lead is 17 to nothing for Prairie View. Remember, they partially blocked a punt by Texas Southern. Got the ball at the 27. Calvin Harris, two back to back plays. He puts it into the end zone. 17 to nothing here in the third quarter. Prairie View over Texas Southern. As they say, who would have thunk it? In the meantime, log on to your online source for all things college sports, ESPNU.com. This online service will be a gateway to all college sports content from ESPN. Combining the latest news with an expanded collection of exclusive material, scores, columns, video, and audio highlights, podcasts, live streaming games, and much, much more. Log on to ESPNU.com today. Along with Eddie Robinson, I'm Charlie Neal. Glad you could be a part of our telecast here at the Lions Stadium in Houston, where the Prairie View AM Panthers just completed a five play, 27 yard scoring drive that took 256 off the clock and they've increased their lead to 17 to nothing their first five possessions of the first half ended in punts their last possession of the half they kick a field goal and they've scored on 
on two of the three possessions here in the second half. Here comes Daniel Davis, the ever dangerous one, and he's back to the 20. Or is that no, that's Osborne on the return. He's dangerous also. Make it number two instead of number eight. So at the own 20 is where Texas Southern will get the ball for the third time in the second half. And they trail it 17 to nothing. Their first possession of the second half ended in a fumble. They had a punt that was blocked on their second, partially blocked, I should say, which gave Prairie View great field position at the 27. And this is their third possession of the second half. Brent Wilson alone set back behind Edgecombe under pressure. Edgecombe trying to get away, and he finally stumbles back and maybe loses only a yard on the play. But the pressure was coming from the defense. And I can tell you, Coach Northern, the defense coordinator, look at all of the Prairie View Panthers. I mean, he has eight guys bringing pressure. I mean, he sat back in the first half and let Tino Edgecombe feel comfortable in complete passes. Now he's up 14 points. Now 17 points. He's going to bring pressure. I mean, these guys had 32 sacks last year, which was second in the conference. So they know how to get after the quarterback. And they're not going to let Tino feel comfortable the rest of this football game, especially when he's playing from behind. And plus, you have a 17-point lead. Exactly. You can take a little chance get every now aggressive. and then. Yeah, become a little more aggressive and figure, well, I'm not going to let him burn me. And we talked to Coach Frazier. We said, do you mess with the defense at all? He said, hey, did I let Coach Northern just go at it? This guy, he's fusses and hollers and screams, and it's like a mad scientist over there. But the, the players respond to him. They play very aggressive. You guys like Zach Geese and, and all these other guys, Balfour just making big hits on defense. He just let those guys go out and play and do what they do. And they were number one in the conference and number eight in the country last year on defense. Reggie Wilson has replaced Aaron DeLong at the center spot for Texas Southern. It is second down and 11. Edgecombe again under pressure. Has it complete to Daniel Davis near side. He does a little juke and still manages to get away. And if he can stay in bounds, he would have been off to the races. You wonder, he worked so well with so little space. I mean, he has nowhere, but, you know, it's like an inch between the sideline and him. And somehow he manages to get around people. And like you said, you can't tackle me in the phone booth. But hey, this is this guy right here. Look at him getting space. And you can see Zach East is coming hard from the inside. He needs his cornerback. Just stay outside. I'm coming to help you, big guy. Look, he's running. He's chasing. But hey, all you have to do is make one guy miss, and then the whole integrity of the defense is broken down. That was Anthony Beck who couldn't stay outside. Out of the flat. Here's Wilson. A catch, and maybe they're going to call it a fumble again. Or did Wilson get it back? They're going to call it a completion. They're going to call it. He is down. And the coaching coaches on the sideline for Prairie View wanted to be incomplete. Henry Frazier saying that was incomplete. Well, that's close. Looked like he took a couple steps with that thing. And somehow he got the ball back. Yeah, he did. Because it was sure headed Prairie View's way. I don't think he'd have said it was incomplete if they'd have given him the ball. <laughs> Second down. Trip receivers to the left. Goes back to the weak side. Intercepted. And on the interception again is Ed Moore. The second turnover for Texas Southern this afternoon. The first interception by Edgecombe. That's just a great defensive job. I mean, you're talking about a guy who really just anticipated the play. He played the three-step drop perfectly. And he breaks before the receiver breaks. I mean, that, that's just a great play for playing defense and just reading the quarterback eyes. In that situation, you see that the quarterback is on that third step. He's releasing it. As a defensive guy, you have to stop, break, and take your chance and make the big play when you get an opportunity. Great defensive play by Edward Moore. Is that the third turnover for Prairie View? Or for Texas Southern? Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 69, five yard penalty, still first down.
First down and ten. Prairie View. And there's Weeden on the reception. And again, for the third straight time in this half, Prairie View starts in Texas Southern Territory. I mean, the intensity level that Prairie View came out with in the third quarter has not been matched by Texas Southern. I mean, these guys just came out smoking from that first drive on offense. They get a turnover, they block a punt. Everything is just going their way of momentum. And Texas Southern doesn't seem like they have the answer to figure out how to stop Prairie View and try to slow them down. From the shotgun, Gibson pass complete in the flat on the far side. Stop made over there by Salvan, but not before the reception by Edia. And I really like the play calling that Coach Frazier is doing along with offensive coordinator Michael Bryan. In the first half, they had Chris Gibson throwing a lot of deep passes, deep passes, a lot of incompletions, but you see what it's doing now. Now they're going back to the short and intermediate passes, five and ten yard passes, and they're just getting completion after completion. So you have that defensive secondary of Texas Southern so worried about the deep pass that they're backing off, and now you're able to complete those little dink and dunk passes. Hey, but they're all counting for first downs. Third down and one. This time, Chris Gibson hands off to Harris and Harris can't get away from Derek Gray. Derek Gray came across made a great stop defensively 28 games to make this a 29th career game for him came into the season with four career sacks and look at him right now stopping you know one of the stats that we see more and more of that defensive players are credited for is tackles for losses and that's one of those situations where he get one of those TFLs as we like to call it a tackle for loss and now timeouts being called by Texas Southern but it was a big quarter for the Panthers of Prairie View remember they went into the locker room at halftime leading three to nothing but here we go Chris Gibson getting down for 50 yards or 51 yards and that made it a 10 to nothing ball game and then a big reception for Harris Harris turns it into something and then after he got the a couple of a penalty he gets a touchdown run and uh, in the interception right here and that interception by Ed Moore and it was 14 points scored here in the second half and they scored on the last play of the first half. Yeah, so it's been all purview from that situation. And Texas Southern was really controlling the game on offense, but couldn't get it in the end zone. And from that point on, the end of that second quarter to now, it's been all purview with the momentum, offense, defense, and special teams. You remember Texas Southern on the first drive of the game went down the field, missed on a field goal as this pass is complete on the far sideline, and it's good enough for a first down for the Panthers of Purview and Adia is again on the reception for the Panthers. And then they had a field goal block. So there were six points that they normally would get from a very reliable kicker in uh, Dijavon uh, Conway, who kicked the, the winning field goal a year ago in this contest. In fact, he was five of eight in field goals a year ago, and he's 0 for 2 so far this season on field goals that were not uh, beyond his range. They keep the ball on the ground once again. This is really the first time we've even seen a two back set out of Prairie View. Now keep in mind, I mean, these guys average 180 yards per game and were first in the conference last year in rushing. So, I mean, it's really been a transformation on offense and the, and the confidence that they're putting in Chris Gibson and also this whole receiver core to come out here with four receiver sets with one running back. The amount of passes that they've thrown today, I don't think they've thrown that many in, in any game last year. And just the confidence that they're putting in Chris as a senior player to take charge and run this offense. Here's Weeden in motion. Gibson with some space on the far side. Hits Weeden on the far side for a first down at the 10. Weeden on the reception on the far side. Good for 17 yards. 
And like you said, Gibson is starting to feel it. Yeah, this is all Chris Gibson. I mean, no one's available. He gets out and he buys time in the pocket. Then he rolls out and he puts the linebacker in a no-win situation. Mike Boyd is covering Wheat. But then when the quarterback comes and puts pressure on whoop, right over your head for the first down. I mean, Chris Gibson is just pressing all the right buttons. First half, he was kind of struggling. From the end of the second quarter on, the guy has really settled down. First and goal. Here's Harris following Gray into the line. And nothing doing that time as a host of defenders were there to make the stop for. Yeah, we haven't talked much about Mike Boyd, but no. man, this guy is a player. I mean, he's a preseason all-conference guy, a big guy at 6'3", 250. And, and this team is kind of built around their outside linebackers. They're running the 3-4 defense, so they need a guy like that who has the versatility to rush the pass and make tackles and plays around the field. And, I mean, right now these guys are tired. I mean, Texas Southern has been on the field a whole lot in this third quarter, so someone has to step up and try and make a big play in this situation, keep Prairie out the end zone. Talking about Boyd, one of those young men we talked about from the state of Maryland, Suitland High. He's from Brandywine, Maryland. And here again, play action. Gibson rolling to the right, throws incomplete. We're not sure who it was intended for. There were two people in the vicinity. Harris was one of them. And there was another player who was coming across the field, and that was, uh, let's see if we can see who's coming across, who also stuck his hand out there. There's yeah. Harris there, and there's another player back behind him. That was Whedon, I believe. Yeah, I yeah. think he was trying to go to Harris, because if Harris catches that ball, he has a good chance to score. He just went a little bit high on him, but once again, you saw Boyd not getting fooled by the bootleg, putting pressure on Gibson, making him throw that pass just a little bit high. I mean, Boyd goes 6'3", six, 6'4", six, so he's a guy that that's definitely a force when you're trying to throw over him. From the, the shotgun again with two backs in the backfield. Here's Gibson throwing wide open is Babers, but Babers is stopped shy of the five-yard line. Good play defensively down there by Chris Salvan, who's been, had a pretty good game on the defensive side of the ball today. He's had an interception. It's been on a number of tackles. It looks like he's come up with some type of cramp. Now he's cramping up. I mean, his air conditioning has been freezing cold in here for me all day, so <laughs> of course I'm not on the football field. And now he <laughs> fell out. He really is cramped up. He he fell out at the 21-yard line. That is Salvan. He's uh, down on the field. He was trying to get off and the cramp just got to him. As you said, the air you know, it's hard to sit around in Houston, Texas in the month of August or September, the first day of September, and talk about we're in the stadium and the air conditioning is kind of cold in here. <laughs> Don't forget, you can see the future stars of football today on ESPN and ESPNU as they deliver two high school football games and it comes your way on Sunday. It kicks off at noon Eastern. The St. Xavier Bombers, they're from Ohio. They'll be hosting the Stags of DeMatha from Maryland when and 3.30 Eastern, Central Catholic Vikings of Pennsylvania take on the Northmont, Ohio Thunderbolts. It's the 2007 Burger King. Kirk Curb Street, Ohio versus USA Challenge on ESPN and ESPNU on Sunday. And don't forget, this year, 562 live events right here on ESPNU. 200-plus college basketball and 70-plus college football games. 20 high school and college sports covered. 15 NCAA championships and 200 live studio shows. And we got a partridge in a pear tree here with a 23-yard field goal forthcoming by Pedro Ventura, who's kicked one already today. His second college field goal attempt is good, along with a couple of extra points. So he's accounted for eight points of this number that uh, Prairie View has put up, the 20. Eight of the 20. And Pedro Ventura, I mean, he's only a freshman, but he's a very smooth kicker. And I would say, by the time he's finished playing college football at Prairie View, he's going to score a lot of points with that foot. So the field goal of 23 yards makes it a 20 to nothing lead with 2.15 to go here in the third quarter. And if you'd have told Steve Wilson this a week ago, that we'd be down. 20 to nothing in the third quarter he'd have probably shot you because he really had so much confidence and faith not only in his defense who's played pretty good they played a pretty good first half but his offense which has done nothing he, he figures he has maybe the best athletes 
that he's had in the four years since he's been here. Well, they've played well on offense. They've been moving the ball up and down the field, but every time they get into the red zone, there's been a couple of holding penalties uh, up front on the big guys. I, I know Aaron DeLong had two holding calls that really cost him in the red zone. So it's pretty much been self-inflicted wounds that's hurt Texas Southern today. Not so much what Prairie View has been trying to do to stop him. Plus the fumble and the interception and the partially blocked uh, punt. All of those things will hurt you as Davis brings the kickoff back to the 32 yard line and you know we were talking about one of the new rules in college football this year is now you kick off from the 30 and with a, a gentleman like Daniel Davis very few kicks are going into the end zone unless you have a kicker with a strong leg. So we're seeing more returns and more people bringing them out. This year. Yeah but they're not going to kick it to, to Daniel Davis. They're definitely going to try to keep it away from him also. Here's one of the NCAA rules. Of course, it was the 40 yard line up to 85. Then, uh, up until last year, it was at the 35. And now, this bull all the way back to the 30 yard line. Texas Southern with the ball at their own 32. Trailing 20 to nothing. Edge Cole throws, has it complete across midfield. And that's what we know the offense can do for Texas Southern is Michael Andrew Anderson. Comes up with the reception. 21 yards. I like what they're doing. I mean, you have two crossing routes, one shallow, one deep. The end window opens up. Ashcomb does a good job of delivering the ball. Now they're going with the no huddle offense with the four and five wide receivers. Pick up the pace because you know you're behind. You have to score some points fast. Well, let's see. Was there motion on the offensive side that caused the defender to jump off sides, or was the defender just a little little anxious. It looked like the tackle might have moved a little bit. Part of snap encroachment defense yep. number 47 five yard penalty still first down. Well we say this more than just a game. There's a whole lot of activities that go along with this whole weekend as we talked about the battle of the bands last night and it's a chance for old friends and old acquaintances to, to come together and see people you haven't seen for quite a while. Miss Texas Southern in attendance here. 2007-2008 Queen. First down and five now for uh, the Tigers. Edge Cole. And he has it complete. And running down the right sideline and finally being brought down, but not before picking up good yards. And that's on the reception was uh, Brian Wilson. A good for 21 yards. That Texas Southern is built to be a passing team. So, I mean, don't count these guys out just because they're down 20 to 0 in the third quarter. They can get they can back definitely, quick. Yeah, they're a team that can get in position and score a lot of points in a short period of time. They're down inside the 20. Edgecombe again under a little pressure. Steps up. He's going to take off and run with it now. Turns the corner. Gets by Zach East and is down at the nine yard line. Now, late penalty flag is going to come. And this may go against Prairie View. There's a lot of laundry on the field. When guys start hitting people late, the referees throw all kind of flags. But you can see the blitz coming from the right side. And Wilson Edge did a good job of uh, picking feels the it up. pressure and gets yeah. out of there and heads to the left. And Zach Eastman, man, is chasing him down. But then there's a blind side hitter. Just a whole lot going out there on the football field right now. And yeah, this one was against Prairie View. That after the whistle blew, one of the defenders really tattooed one of the offensive players from Texas Southern he got caught and his first and goal for the Tigers of Texas Southern they're trailing 20 to nothing under a minute to go third quarter under center is edge Cole. Wilson lost the ball it was taken away and waiting for the officials to signal it looks like nothing but dark jerseys down under that pile. Wilson with if he it is Prairie View's ball. That's the second fumble for him today. And you can't win the ball turning it over. You get all the way down to the four yard line from your own 32. A great drive and let's look at it. Look at the hit here. That's Kenneth Zenon. 
who yeah, stripped the ball. And that's just a great play. I mean, that's one guy making an individual effort, not only beating this block, but also not just trying to make the tackle, but getting the ball out of the runner, the runner's hand. Just a great individual effort by Kenneth Zenon, the sophomore linebacker coming there to pull that ball. And I keep in mind, I mean, Prairie View, I mean, man, these guys had 22 turnovers a year ago in Texas Southern, but the three trips in the red zone, zero points and two turnovers. Well, you saw that uh, graphic that talked about talked about the fact that there was three trips into the red zone for Texas Southern. They missed a couple of field goals, plus they turned the ball over this time with Brent Wilson at the four yard line. And you don't win ball games doing that. Yeah, I mean, it was a great play by the defender, but the running back has to know when you're in the red zone, they're going to try to get the ball out of my hand, put two hands on the football, and you have to secure it at all times. 15 minutes of football remaining here in the 23rd edition of the Labor Day Classic from Reliance Stadium in Houston, Texas, where Texas Southern finds themselves on the downside of a 20 to nothing score. And we'll be back. Houston in a moment. Calvin Harris getting into the end zone. And Superman is here. Right here as we start the fourth quarter from Reliance Stadium in Houston, Texas. This is college football presented by City. Last time Prairie View shut out Texas Southern was way back in 1946. By the score 12 nothing, Texas Southern was then known as the Texas College for Negroes, and that was a long, long time ago. It's going to be very interesting. Along with Eddie Robinson, Charlie Neal here is Calvin Harris. Does not get away from the the grass. And the elusive tackling of the defense of Texas Southern. They got to, this is going to be a good opportunity for Texas Southern to do something on the defensive side of the ball. And the reason I say that is because Prairie View is back up inside the five yard line. And a, and a lot of coaches, a lot of defense coordinators, they feel like when I have an offense backed up, here's a chance for me to score points or force them into doing something bad, whether it's a safety or interception or something. Or if they do punt, you have a dangerous return guy where you can get good field position. So Texas Southern definitely has an opportunity to make a play on defense and not just be out there and, and playing defense. Calvin Harris, the lone setback back there behind the quarterback, and they had a problem with the snap between the center and the quarterback, Gibson. So they didn't gain anything on that. They're going to bring up a fourth down punting situation. So now, let's see. Do you have a, a good... Somebody could get on there and block a punt. Well, I tell you what, the number eight dangerous Daniel Davis, I think I'm going to put my money on the return game. Because this guy, if they kick a line drive punt right here, trust me, the punter will be trying to make a tackle because he's going to bring it back extremely fast. <laughs> and here's Prairie View punter, Fagard, who's also a freshman. Who's done a pretty good job today? He gets that one off. Watch out. And here's Davis at the 47 yard line. Gets a block. Trying to reverse his field. He's not, he's losing yards. Okay. That's great coverage. Yeah, it's north, north, south, east, west, north, north. <laughs> Don't forget the FIFA U17 World Cup games continues on ESPNU Sunday morning. It's two games, first at 2.45 in the morning. Argentina and Nigeria go at it. Then at 5.45 a.m. Eastern, it'll be Germany going against England. It's the FIFA U-17 World Cup on ESPNU Sunday morning. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. I'm still impressed with the kicking game for these freshmen. And that was one of the things that when we talked to Henry Frazier, he talked about the fact that he was able to sign some kickers. He wasn't even sure who was going to be the starting kicker in any position. He said he signed three of them because that was one of the things they had some problems with a year ago with the kicking game. And these young men, Fagard and, uh, and Ventura, have come through big so far this afternoon. I think Ventura was had like 80 straight PATs 
in high school. So, I mean, these guys were very accomplished. And one thing about kicking is it's pretty easy to evaluate. If the guy can kick in high school, he should be able to kick in college. I mean, other than the nervous part of it, and once these guys can settle down and get into a rhythm, you know, you make the first kick, and from there on, it's just like riding the bike. I mean, that's what they do. They're kickers. And just stay away from them and, and, and leave them out of the psyche thing. I mean, physically, they know how to kick. Yeah, Ventura is hit on a 34 and a 23-yarder. Fagard has had a 50-yard punt, a 40-some-yard punt. I mean, he's, they're punting well. Yeah, I tell you what, and you can't underestimate the value of a good kicking game you know at any level of football but also you know in one double-a football especially just because a lot of teams don't have great cooking games so if it's something that you have I mean, it's a big advantage for you if you have a good punter and a reliable field goal kicker. Yeah, let's see if Texas Southern can redeem themselves with 13 0 9 to go in the contest and trailing 20 to nothing. They didn't give up any points after that last fumble. Edge comb again and he has a complete and it's Mike Anderson with the reception and he has a first down and he's inside the 40 down to the 38 yard line. And we were talking with Steve Wilson. Of course he had his computer out before the game and he was going through the way that he, he really analyzed his plays and mistakes and, and, and uses the coach's team and you can see the, the catch going across the middle. I mean they're going to really be upset with themselves because they, they're doing a lot of good things today on offense but they're just not getting the ball in the end zone. And that's going to really frustrate these guys if they end up not winning their football game. Or well, not getting into the end zone at all. Here's a pass on complete to Davis. Davis down to the 30 yard line and he's tackled immediately by Ed Moore. And it's about an eight yard gain. It'll be second down. We'll call it two. Now you have the Ocean of Soul. That's the Texas Southern's band with the marching girls. And that's a big part of this whole thing, too. I mean, there's a lot of people here that. See who has the best band also and that's a big part of the whole tradition and the atmosphere you see the drum line and the movies have been made about the college football band especially you know historically black colleges and universities that's something that's a very big part of this whole culture of black college football and you and you talk about the ocean of soul the, the young ladies that dance with them are called the motion of the ocean okay and they have this <laughs> this theme that says it's not the size of the wave it makes you drown, but the most of the ocean when it hits your town. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at the turnovers. Texas Southern. There you go, That's Zach. A fumble. Yeah, actually causing the fumble and recovering the fumble. There's the interception by Moore. And this is Wilson's fumble. Three turnovers. One interception. Of course, Brent Wilson has two of those fumbles, but I mean, both of them you have to give credit to the defense. One of them he was stripped by Zach East, and of course, the second one when he was going into the end zone, he was also stripped by big number nine, Kenneth Zenon. So, I mean, give Prairie View credit. They're not just having fumbles just all of a sudden happen. These guys are going out there and creating fumbles, and they're really forcing the action from the defensive side of the ball. From the gun again. Edgecomb in trouble, and he's going to be sacked before he can get this one off, and he's going to lose yards across the 30 yard line. Good defensive effort by Weissman and Marcus Johnson to make the stop defensively. Yeah, and when you get up 20 to 0 in the fourth quarter, I mean, those defensive linemen, they know that, hey, we're going after the quarterback. We don't have to worry about the runs and the screens and those type of things. Let's just get pressure on the quarterback. And, and that's the part of the game when these defensive linemen, they really excel at doing what they do best, and that's making sacks and getting big hits. It is third down and about four. New running back is in the lineup, and there's a penalty flag down. And that is David Jackson, a sophomore from Sugarland, Texas. Offside, defense number 99. Here is the time. Result of the play. First down. So Prairie View has a defensive player jump offside. They'll take the play. The ball is down at the 20, and it's a first down. For Texas Southern with 11.30 to go as you see Henry Frazier again they have been in this position defensively a couple of times today but they have not allowed 
Texas Southern to cross the goal line. Very impressive when you can let Tien get inside your 20 and you hold them to zero points even by turnovers or missed field goals. Edgecombe lets it go. High pass, but it's caught on the far sideline and taken down about a yard, yard shy of a first down by Haith. Brian Haith, BJ, out of Upland, California. I mean, this is definitely a real deal passing game. When you look at the snap that Edgecombe puts on that ball, and he's able to read the defense, see everyone is backing off, so he goes with the underneath guy to Brian Hayes, to B.J. Hayes. So, I mean, this passing game is definitely has legs. They just can't get it into the end zone, but that'll come as the season goes on. But I know they want to get that done right here on this drive because you're going through this whole game, and you're in the fourth quarter, and you don't score any points. You definitely don't want to go into the opening game and have zero points on the scoreboard. Fourth time in the red zone for... Texas Southern here's a pass incomplete trying to get it in the hands of Daniel Davis and you talk about Texas Southern a year ago in the red zone they got down there 32 times last season and was only able to punch it in 18 so that's uh, not a good percentage well and it kind of reminds me of course I played here in Houston when I started my career with Warren Moon and we had the run and shoot and one thing we always had trouble with when you get inside that 10 yard line and you have that offense where you're passing a lot, I mean, that defense, they don't really have anywhere to drop to. They just sit there and pin their heels up and they come and attack you. And it's kind of the same thing I'm seeing with Texas Southern. They're getting inside the 20 and all of a sudden Prairie View starts to blitz and they can't get any positive plays to push it those last 10 yards and get in the end zone. 33rd and two here again is the running back Jackson. They've had a little more bulk down here as they got closer to the goal line because Brent Wilson was having problems holding on to the ball as he was getting stripped by those bigger linebackers so he's on the sideline right now and they've come in with a bigger backfield and just a little more weight Wilson is a, is a good player now we see uh, hobbling off the field is Michael Anderson who's had a pretty big game at uh, at receiver number 87 there he is he's favoring that left foot there and he's the, out of Houston and he's the big wide receiver. He's the guy that you would want in the game. He said, right I don't want you touching me. Look at it. Jump ball guy. <laughs> he didn't want it. Hey, I'm going to get off on my own. I don't want anybody to touch me. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, I think he'll be OK. He's trying to shake it off. But that's the guy that you would want in the ball game right now because he's a big receiver. And in this, this red zone situation, maybe someone you can throw a jump ball to or something to try to make a touchdown. Well, Davis comes out. It is first and goal for Texas Southern. They apparently have who they want to as far as the lineup, and Edgecombe sent him off. Edgecombe working under the center this time. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up pretty good. Yes, oh. Here's the second interception, and this one could go for six. They're taking it all the way back. Coming down the field, number two with it for Prairie View. 92 yards and it's Anthony Beck for six four times in the red zone Charlie missed field goal block field goal and two turnovers There's no way you can win a football game like that Texas Southern has had their chances on offense but man give Prairie View defense credit by not letting them in the end zone and now with the interception return for a touchdown taking a 26 to 0 lead late in the fourth quarter I don't know if Texas Southern can come back from this, but this is a great job. And they're just running a little out route. Beck just steps in front of it and, and has the wheels to go the distance and get it all the way in the end zone. And man, you can see the Prairie View sideline very excited over that play. This number one ranked defense in the swag showing why. Four times in the red zone, two turnovers, two missed field goals for Texas Southern. And they're in danger of being down 27 to nothing is. Brady Fagard was in for the point after this time. That shows you how versatile they are. Fagard has been punting all day. Now he comes in to kick the extra point. <laughs> 27 to nothing. The score. Very happy Beck on the sideline. This sophomore out of Channel View, Texas. Takes it back. With 9.34 to go in the contest, a happy Prairie View sideline and of course uh, out of the 27 points they put up on the board tonight Eddie only 14 have come on the offensive side of the ball and that was Gibson's 51 yard run Harris a six yard run they've gotten a couple field goals from Ventura plus Beck's 92 yard interception return as I mentioned four trips into the red zone tonight for Texas Southern 
a couple of turnovers both fumbles and a pair of missed field goals and of course that's the story of the game when you get inside the red zone four times and have nothing to show for it and now you have one that's intercepted for a touchdown anything else that happens in the game really doesn't matter that's pretty much the storyline of why Texas Southern is down 27 to 0 at this point the Ventura to kick it off Keep in mind, Charlie, we had a 3-0 game, and wow, Fairview just came out of the third quarter with tons of enthusiasm and was just able to take over this game with the turnovers and the big plays on offense. 21 yeah. points off of four Texas Southern turnovers by Fairview AM, and m and that's pretty much the storyline of this game. They've turned it over, and Fairview has taken advantage of all of those turnovers. Well that's always a mark of a good team in fact uh, I think out of uh, the four turnovers the only one that they did not capitalize on was the last Brent Wilson fumble they were able, able to hold him and force him to punt from their own four yard line but then on the ensuing drive they still managed to score. Yep. So Texas Southern will get the ball with 925 to go at their own 46 yard line. This is their sixth possession of the second half all of them, all four of their turnovers occurred here in the second half they've only had one drive in which they didn't turn the ball over that was their second drive and the putt was partially blocked so it may as well have been a turnover what a hit on the receiver and we got a flag that comes in late and I don't know if that's because of a taunting or anything of that nature, but the tight end, Marcus Justice, was the intended, intended receiver. Now let's see what the flags Dead are. Ball, unsportsmanlike conduct, taunting. Number 56 on the defense, automatic first down. I said it might have been taunting, and that's exactly what it was. And that's, and that's two plays in a row where Prairie has had a dead ball fall. So you, you make a good play, I mean, tough hit by Kenneth Zenon. After that, hey, just line back up and play football. You don't need all of the extra curricula. The referees are going to see that. And you're winning 27-0. to And that's something that really is going to tick off a coach because you have to know how to win. I mean, you're up 27-0, play football, all of the extra stuff. It really doesn't matter at this point. Chris Ford, the man whistled for the unsportsmanlike. First down and 10. For Texas Southern, the ball at the 39 of Prairie View. Edgecombe was gone all the way at quarterback. And flag, the holding penalty is going to be whistled, even though Davis made the reception. And I believe this flag is going to be whistled against Arnold Nichols, number 66. Like he had a whole piece of. Prairie View Jersey in his hand. Yeah, I mean, a couple of crucial holding calls. I mean, early in the game, the offensive line from Texas Southern had some holding calls. And here, once holding again, offense number 73, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. But well, they're trying to, they keep down. giving it to the long. He, he didn't do it all by himself. That's <laughs> the third, that's the third holding penalty on him tonight. Well, there he is. Hey. Well, yeah, I think he might have did that one, though. Yeah, I, thought, I thought 66 <laughs> had more of that than 73. <laughs> yeah, but give credit to me. That's big number 93, Derek, Derek Williams. And that's the guy that Frazier told us was a camp surprise, a guy that came right. out of nowhere and is playing extremely well. And he's, it's the reason that he's getting those holding calls and getting beat up front. Well, he asked Frazier what made him smile in addition to that young man. He talked about the kickers as the quarterback is brought down. Edge Cole with nowhere to run that time and he it was Aiden Busula who came up with the stop defensively number 47 the young man out of Randallstown Maryland a little suburb of Baltimore yeah I mean and, and Prairie View had 32 sacks last year of McGee and John Johnson I mean having 15 and a half of those sacks so it was really a question of who was going to step up and make plays as a pass rusher but now you see they have a defensive line and they're able to get pressure on the quarterback. Edgecombe out in the flat and it's Jackson. Jackson's knocked out of bounds in front of the 
Texas yeah. Southern bench by Zach East. Yeah, Zach East. I mean, this guy's had a bad attitude. I don't know what he had for breakfast this morning, but man, it's showing up late in the evening. This guy's just been hitting people all day, causing fumbles, recovering fumbles. I just like the way he plays the middle of the field, and once he sees it, bam, here I come. You know? <laughs> I mean, and keep in mind, that's a big fullback. David Jackson is a 5'11, 235 pound guy. He just throws him around and, and, and swats him like a fly. I mean, this guy's a football player. He, I like what he does. He brings a lot of attitude to this defense. Third down, 17. Out of the backfield. They keep the ball on the ground. And Zach East is there on the tackle defensively. And there he goes. I mean, you look at him. He kind of has those Mike Singletary eyes. Who's another guy. You know, he went to Baylor in, in college. But he's another guy that prep went to high school here in Houston. I mean, the guy just comes up with no tape on the fingers, no gloves. They're just old school player. I'm here to play football. What time does the game start? And he knows how to get to the ball carry. He does a good job of fighting off blocks, getting around blocks. And when he gets to the ball carry, he gets there with a bad attitude. And that's what you want in your middle linebacker. Fourth down and one. They're going to go for it. Of course, they are trailing with 7.15 to go, 27 to nothing. That was Jeff Bell on the carry the last time. Edgecombe looking, looking, looking at his intercepted, tipped in the air. It was tipped in the air that time by Anding Adingapu and picked off by number 57, and that is Max Centure. So the another turnover. This one was tipped in the air. 27-0 with seven minutes to go. ESPNU College Football is presented by City. Let's get it done. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Five turnovers all in the second half for Texas Southern. Three interceptions, two fumbles. And they're trailing 27 to nothing. They were only trailing 3 nothing at halftime. They've given up 24 points here in the second half. 21 coming off of turnovers and flags are flying. And a new quarterback in the lineup for the Panthers of Fairview. Mark Spivey. Spivey. Follow the snap. Full start. Offense number 66. Five yard penalty. Still first down. And Spivey, that's uh, Jesse Jones who was whistled for the false start. But Spivey has some experience also. In 05, two years ago, he was a wide receiver and quarterback. And then he split time with uh, Gibson a year ago. But a lot of people were questioning whether Frazier was making the right decision in naming Gibson so early. But he knew what he was talking about. Yeah, definitely so. He made the right call on that. Here's Spivey. He's going to take off and run with it and runs out of bounds in front of the Texas Southern bench but gets the first well not the first down he's about three or four yards shot. But Charlie I would have to say I mean all is not lost to Texas Southern. I mean this is a team where you can see the explosiveness of a of a Tino Edgecombe and the guys that they have. I mean, you take away the turnovers which you can't do that but they've been good inside the 20 yard line. They just had a lot of red zone from this a team with that offense they could come out here and score 30 or 40 points next week and then there could still be a, a force to be reckoned with but give credit to Fairview not just their defense for making plays but also their offense for making the adjustments at halftime coming down the third quarter with a lot more energy than Texas Southern and putting points on the scoreboard and here again is Spivey you know you talk about a team a year ago that only averaged 15.6 points per contest this uh, very View team and they put up 27 points already this evening yet they were giving up about 20 points per game in fact they only scored 25 points twice last year but then you know coach talks about the games that they lost by close margins you know how many games did they lose by five points yeah, or something? seven seven of their conference losses were by seven points or less so they were in every football game you talk about one possession one big play and we were right back in it and can take the lead so I mean, they've been competitive along with Texas Southern also last year I think both of these teams can have good years and possibly both have winning records this year and you know you talk about the the years gone by and some of the the, the famous 
alumni who's come out of uh, this Prairie View team or his program, Kenny Houston, who's an NFL Hall of Famer, Alvin Reed, a tight end, Clem Daniels, who ran, was a running back in the NFL, who now is the national alumni president for Prairie View. Seal Whittington, who came back and coached here for a year. Of course, Jim Mitchell. And Otis Taylor, who was a receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs in Super Bowl One. I. I mean, these are the guys. So Prairie View has had some tradition over the years. Yeah, they fell on some hard times. Very they, hard. You know, seven-year stretch where they didn't win a game between 91 and 97. They lost 80 straight. You know, they didn't even have a team in 1990. And they finally snapped that string with uh, a 14 to 12 win over Langston in game four of the 1998 season and of course here's the schedule they travel out to California to play uh, North Carolina A&T next uh, Saturday then they'll be at Southern University they'll post Grambling then they get the road against all corner in Alabama State they play Mississippi Valley they go to Pine Bluff and they close out the season against Jackson State and Alabama A&M so this swack is always tough it's never an easy schedule for anybody and it's going to be interesting. We'll see enough a number of SWAC games this year ourselves. In fact, next Thursday I'll get a chance to see Arkansas Pine Bluff, who was in the SWAC championship a year ago, go against the Braves of Alcorn State, and then you and I'll get a chance to see the same Texas Southern team in a couple Jackson of weeks State. on a Thursday night uh, down at Jackson State. And but you uh, talk about the West. I mean, Pine Bluff is definitely the class of the West, but they go out and lose to Mississippi Valley today. And so hey, you look at a prayer view in a Texas other I and mean, it's way early to kind of figure out what team is good or bad. I think all of these teams in the SWAC conference there's no one clear cut favorite. And so prayer view as well as Texas Southern both can have very good years. You just have to play and see what happens. No question about it. And here goes Daniels. He was somersault in the air at their own 40 yard line. Texas Southern seventh possession of the second half five have ended in disaster with three seven six with 527 to go I believe Steve Wilson has conceded this contest and the reason I say that Eddie is because a new quarterback in there is Donnie Shorts and why get Edgecombe maybe possibly injured at this juncture when you're down 27 points right absolutely so Donnie Shorts comes off the bench. They try to take his towel, but instead. Well, I would say the, the only reason to play Edgecombe at this point would be so you score a touchdown. You don't want to go through your whole first game and get shut out. But in the long term, I mean, you have to realize that Tino Edgecombe is your guy. I mean, this is a guy that can go out there and, and throw some great passes and do a lot of good things with the football. He's your leader. And you don't want to get him hurt in the game when you're down 27 to 0 and you're probably not going to come back and win. Well, Donnie Shorts is a young man who played six games a year ago. Very mobile. He was the newcomer of the week in a game against Arkansas Pine Bluff in which he threw two touchdowns on 114 yards passing. Let's it fly. Has a receiver there. No. And it's a touchdown. Texas Southern. Finally, they get on the scoreboard with Brian Wilson on the reception. 54 yards. That was a very unlikely play. You think we have the quarterback controversy at this point? I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. But at least they avert the shutout. And they do avert the shutout. And I'm, I'm sure that cornerback who gave up that touchdown for Prairie View will, will, will be dumb. They will definitely tell him that Coach Northern will. When you get a team down 27 0 with four minutes left from a defensive standpoint, you want to finish the game. But hey, Texas Southern is still fighting, and, and these kids deserve it. I and mean, they worked hard and to get on the scoreboard. It just kind of gets you ready for next week. The point after is good. And it's 27 to 7 with 432 to go. Here in the fourth quarter. So the first possession in a while that didn't end in a turnover for Texas Southern. Yeah, he kind of bobbled it and defensive back fell and was able to get it into the end zone. But I mean these guys have been playing good offense all all day. They just haven't been able to get it into the end zone, but they've been working hard at it. So two plays, they go 61 yards. And they get into the end zone on Donnie Short, 
And I just talked about he was a newcomer of the week against Arkansas Pine Bluff a year ago when he started the game and uh, threw for 114 yards and a pair of touchdowns. And he comes off the bench here in what I call, had previously said was Coach Wilson conceding this contest. Well, I think he absolutely was conceding, but hey, I'm sure he'll take a touchdown however he'll get it. And So lining up for the onside kick. D. Javon Conway, who missed a couple of field goals, pretty reliable kicker. He did hit the extra point. And here we try the onside kick. It is downed immediately. Prairie View, the all hands team up front, and that's Marlon Allen who feels it for the Panthers. And that's where they'll go to work at the Texas Southern 42 yard line. Now, Charlie, we were talking earlier, just you know, going down memory line. The last time both of these teams had a winning record in the same year. You have to go back 40 years to 1967 with Prairie View having a five and four record, Texas Southern a four and three. But you know, really, even though this game seems one side, I think this is a year that both of these teams can both go above 500. Yep. I mean, the SWAC is competitive. They both have senior leaders at quarterback and good defense. I mean, this game kind of got out of hand because of the mistakes that Texas Southern made. But these two teams are evenly matched. If they play next weekend, I don't think it'll be a 27 to, to 7 ball game. So. Two teams that are going to both have a lot to say what happens in the swag division, especially in the West. Oh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Last year, Texas Southern was known as not a good second half team. They were outscored 201 to 74 in the second half. Here's a pass going upstairs. And it is caught. Boy, everybody coming off the bench wants to have a piece of the pie. And this time is Sean Stevens. The wide receiver reserve who comes down with a 39 yard reception and it downs it inside the five at the four where it'll be first to go. And I'd like to say, hey, the backups, they won't have a chance to score. Their moms and dads are sitting in the stands also. They're at home watching on ESPNU. So they don't want to come out here and just run running plays and end the game. They want to come out here and make spectacular catches like that. Wow. Complete and turn around, hold on to the football, get your hands under it. This is a great catch. Cameron Gardner was the man who was beaten on the play as first and goal. Here's the handoff in the backfield. Nothing doing that time as they keep the ball on the ground. That is the Panthers. A Prairie View with uh, Calvin Harris. And I'm sure Texas Southern has taken offense to this. I mean, hey, these two teams are, are not far apart, and both of them play hard. A lot of the guys played against each other in high school, and then when you're down 27 to 7, you don't want anyone scoring on you anymore. So, I mean, this defense is going to play hard and try to keep them out the end zone. 3.30, the time to go. Clock ticking. 20-point lead for Prairie View, and they have the ball and knocking on the door once again. Calvin Harris, he has a touchdown already today from nine yards out, and he takes it a little closer to the goal line, down to the two. Alvin Harris actually it was a six yard run and that came with uh, 833 to go in the third quarter made it 17 to nothing after the quarterback who started the game and before giving way here to Spivey late in the contest Gibson had a 51 yard run and that was uh, the first two touchdowns scored by Prairie View in this contest it is third and goal. But again, we're going to look and see as the play action Spivey keeps it and dives in for six. So Spivey increases the lead to 33 to 7. Handed off to Calvin Harris the last couple of times, just gave him a fake, and hey, Spivey. He's the backup quarterback, but he played quite a bit last year, so here's a guy that they expect to come in here and, and win a football game. This is in a crucial situation, and he wanted to get into that end zone. Hey, finish the game off strong. Point after is good. And it's 34 to 7 here. Now let's look at our Dick's Sporting Goods fresh start. A couple of field goals tonight by the freshman kicker Pedro Ventura with the strong leg 
5 9 170 pound freshman from Westfield High right here in Houston in fact he was third on the depth chart when they started camp and he's come out to be a pretty good uh, kicker here tonight yeah coach Frazier said we started off with three kickers the top two one of them came into to be the field goal kicker the other one the punter the third guy they rest well, that's so. Brady Fagard the punter who's done a pretty good job tonight he's been kicking so they've got you know they've got three kickers so you never know who's going to be in the ball game at any time normally the extra points and short field goals are handled by that young man Fagard and Ventura and he also punts and the uh, the long field goals and the the punting is done by Ventura so he's got some pretty good kickers there then you see the the third kicker there hold, holding right. the ball Remember I said they've got three kickers on this team and that's Kyle Matthews wrong way son maybe maybe something will happen <laughs> it's like playing Pac-Man isn't it <laughs> I tell you what, that guy's gonna be tired tomorrow. But he's 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 care about the score. I just want to keep playing football and try to make something happen. You have to respect that. Got that ankle breaker. You have four guys all falling, falling behind each other. I mean, perhaps he's lucky that he didn't get out of here because I mean you have a lot of those guys just running behind each other and he can make people miss. One thing Coach Frazier is gonna have to put some attention to me. He may have had like three or four personal fouls. Just yeah. unfortunate like conducts and those type of things. home these guys will be back I mean, this is just one ball game opening game and it definitely doesn't make a season 32 yards on the touchdown pass so shorts of 54 yards to Brian Wilson and then a 32 yarder to Haith and uh, some people might be saying where was Brian shorts earlier or Donnie shorts earlier rather 34 13 is the score Devon Conway on for the point after. We had a player shaken up for review, and that's what the holdup is. Going off under his own power. Well, this drive started at the their own 25. It's a 75-yard drive. Minute 18 to go. Point after is good and it's 34 to 14. Well, we'll have to see if Texas Southern comes with another onside kick or if they just decide to kick it deep and let the game um, kind of expire. But Texas Southern next week will be at home hosting Alabama State on campus. So they'll definitely have a chance to rebound from this game. You know, East meets West, a team from the Eastern and Western Division. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch and see what happens in the SWAC uh, in the upcoming season, and especially when you look at uh, the schedules and how they were predicted to finish. There is uh, Texas Southern with Alabama State coming in, and we'll see them on Thursday night at Jackson State on the 13th. Then they go to Texas El Paso, home against Alcorn, travel to Valley and Grambling, home against Southern Arkansas Pine Bluff, close out the season right here in the city of Houston at the University of Houston. But you look at the preseason predictions, Alabama and m Jackson, Alcorn, Mississippi Valley. I should say that's not the preseason prediction. That's the way they finished a year ago. Uh, Alabama and m was on top. They won the championship in Arkansas. Pine Bluff finished in second place. But when you look at the, the preseason predictions, what do you think? I think they got the yeah, ball. Texas Southern does. Texas Southern did get the ball Another back. Chance to get more points. I mean, I, I like the preseason prediction. I think Pine Bluff, even though they lost today against Mississippi Valley, 
They're definitely the class of the West, unless someone else really steps up and makes the play. I mean, Grambling has a lot of talent on that team, perhaps as a first-year coach. And in the East, I think you have to go with Alabama A&M and also Jackson State. Arkansas Pine Bluff, I understand, lost today, so that might uh, it's not going to help them in their preseason predictions to take over the West. Grambling, though, I believe with Coach Broadway, brand new coach coming in from North Carolina Central, who coached them to the Black National Championship a year ago, will probably keep them on the straight and narrow. Southern came away with a big win today over Florida A&M, and of course Texas Southern was picked to finish fourth and Prairie View fifth in the preseason poll. I think this conference is going to be up and down this year. It, week to week, you really can't predict who's going to win the ball game. And again, Haith on the reception, a gain of about nine yards, run out of bounds in front of the Prairie View bench with a minute six to go. And this kid, uh, Shorts, has come off the bench. And now you got to remember different type of uh, defensive schemes right oh, now. Oh, absolutely. I mean, trust me, it's, it's <laughs> Tino Edgecombe is the leader of this Texas Southern offense, and he will be for the rest of this year. I mean, but you have to give. Uh, Charge credit for coming here and making some good throws. He's thrown a couple of touchdowns and, and led his team down the field. So at least they're getting some offensive confidence going into next week. Shorts again throws a little high this time. That was almost intercepted. That one was intended for Mike Anderson. What do you think about the East? Alabama and M. Of course, you you've got to give them the nod. They're the defending champs. They have their quarterback back. Uh, Jackson State though. There's, that's the most dangerous team I think you yeah, have. Yeah, I mean, this I, th way. I think they're a monster brewing in the East with Coach Kamaji's coming over to Tuskegee. I mean, the things he was able to do last year, I mean, you just have to expect them to come up and have a real big year. Jimmy Oliver is a quarterback, a little inconsistent, but just look at the whole talent of that team and the coaching staff. I mean, it's hard to bet against Jackson State, you know, not having a great year in the SWAC this year. And of course, they just have the, the, all of the legends that have played there in the history and tradition of that program. You know, I think Arkansas Pine Bluff has all the key people back in terms of uh, skill positions, but I think they're having some problems with their line, both the on the offensive line, and yeah. uh, defensive side of the ball. And yeah, we'll see them in a couple weeks, and uh, I think you and I were talking before this game. We'll man, see them next week. Out of the five we'll offense, next, yeah, next week, week, yeah, Thursday, Thursday yeah, <laughs> a couple of days. I mean, but they have five out of the five offensive linemen. It's only one guy coming back, so. Now you have the Texas Southern Tiger. He's still in, the, in a very good spirit. Kind of a happy looking Tiger, isn't he? Yeah, no question. <laughs> well, 34 seconds to go in this one. Donnie Shorts coming off the bench. He's thrown a couple of touchdown passes. Now using his footwork, he gets out of bounds and stops the clock at about the 32-yard line. And I'm going to tell you what, from a defensive player, I've been in this situation. We've had a team, you know, kind of on the ropes, but beating them up all day. And the backup quarterback comes in there and wants to be a hero. Look for somebody to try to knock him in the mouth at some point. <laughs> hey, guy, you know what? This game is over with. You've thrown a couple touchdowns, and I take your curtain call. So, <laughs> I mean, Prairie View's defense, I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Norther just throws a blitz in there out the blue just to let Tony know, hey, you know, you're still in the football game. This isn't practice. But this Prairie View defense, I mean, they, they've come as advertised, continuing where they left off last year, number one in the conference. Had over 22 turnovers last year. I think they've had four or five turnovers today, one for a score. So, I mean, no matter what their offense do, when you play that type of defense, you're going to be in every football game. And that was the case last year. Well, no question about it. You talk about the, you know, creating situations. They were plus six in the giveaway takeaway department a year ago. You know, uh, they had 21 turnovers, but they created 27 from their opponents and that's always a good sign and don't forget you can also see future stars of football today on ESPN and ESPNU as they deliver two high school football games coming your way on Sunday first at noon Easter the St. Xavier Bombers of Ohio face the Stags of the Matha from Maryland then at 330 Eastern Central Catholic Vikings of Pennsylvania take on the North Mount Ohio Thunderbolts it's the 2007 Burger King, Kirk Herb Street, Ohio versus USA Challenge, right here on ESPNU and ESPN on Sunday. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. 
It's Cone. And he was all tied that time, wasn't he? And the timeout's being called, but Prairie View's Dalvin Nettles was the man who got him and wouldn't let go. Number 92. Dalvin Nettles, one of those reserve young men. You know, defensive tackles coming around the corner. Hey, once you get that big paw on them, just don't let them go and wrap them up and take them down. And I don't, I don't care what time of the game it is. If you're up by 20, down by 20, it, it's hard to get a sack from the defensive line. And when you get one, you get excited. Man. And you so. look at Dalvin Nettles there. Here's a young man from Forest Brook High in Houston. He was redshirted a year ago, the man who had the, the last tackle. And he's lost weight. They said he's lost about 40 pounds to get into shape for this season. He was recruited by both Texas Southern and Southern University, but decided he wanted to go to Prairie View. And that was one of the big surprises that Coach Frazier said that last year he was a big kid, a lot of, a lot of baby fat, you know, eating a lot of Twinkies around campus. And then he just <laughs> kind of dedicated himself in the offseason. He said in that redshirt year really helped him. Now, he was the epitome of what a redshirt year is supposed to do. You stay in the weight room, get your lessons, work hard, and you come back in the spring and in the fall, and, you, and you're ready to play. And now you're a football player. Eight seconds to go. Should be the last play of the contest. Donnie Short has a complete far sideline going down the sideline and still on his feet and finally dropped down as the clock goes to zero. And the reception made by Jeff Bell coming out of the backfield. They're trying to sneak up on <laughs> Coach Frazier with the Gatorade, but he don't want him. Him and Steve Wilson, they meet at half court, or I should say at midfield. <laughs> Meanwhile, of course, Steve Wilson was an assistant coach to Henry Frazier at Bowie State. So they know each other well. He says the only thing I can't beat him in is golf. You beat him <laughs> on the football field today. That's what counts. <laughs> Your thoughts real quick. I think it's just two teams that are really going to play hard and both of them going to have very successful seasons this year, even though Prairie View took advantage of them today. Well, that's it for another Labor Day Classic, and it's the final 34-14. For more information, log on to your home for the finest in college sports, ESPNU.com. Betty Robinson, Charlie Neal, so long from Houston. Debating whether they needed to or not, we'll find out here in a few hours. NASCAR next L Cup practice final moments of happy hour almost done here. Jeff Gordon atop the speed charts, David Reagan, Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick, and Johnny Sauter. The Pressure on Kevin Harvick. He is a 12th in the in the chase. Can he get the car in the chase here on Saturday night? 47 cars are here. 43 will qualify. If you're a Dale Earnhardt Jr. fan right now, folks, he is 43rd on the speed charts and has lots of work to do. Coming up next will be first take. Remember, we'll be back here at 4 o'clock Eastern time for NASCAR Bush Series qualifying.